Hi friends, welcome to our YouTube channel at Academy. The name of this lecture is to discuss about the some of the important points in the power electronics in a very very detailed manner. And if you like the comment of our channel, then please to like, share and subscribe our YouTube channel and don't forget to press the bell icon button. So whenever we upload a new video, the direct notions comes from our wire. If any improvements will be normally lectures, then please do comment in the comment section. We will definitely include all those improvements in the coming lectures. So why do we slow down? So let's get started. Some of the important points in the power electronics are the first one is we can extend the period of our natural resources by using it efficiently. Hence, if you are going to use the natural resources very efficiently, you can you are going to extend the period of our natural resources. Improving the conversion efficiency means here energy is going to convert from one format to another format. So always we have to use them in a very efficient manner. Yes, we have to use the energy in a very efficient manner. So because of that, we are going to extend the period of our natural resources. So improving the percentage of renewables. So always you have to use the natural resources. So so always you have to use the renewable sources to generate the power. So therefore we can get more amount of energy. So here we are we are always going to use our natural resources in a very efficient manner so that we can extend the period of it extension. So because of that we have to always improve the conversion efficiency. Means the losses should be very less so that for the, the energy conversion is very good then we can say we can use for a large amount of time. So always you have to use the renewable sources very on the large scale. So on the large scale you have to use the renewable sources. See, power electronics is a technology associated with efficient conversion and control of electric power by power electronic devices. The goal of power electronics is to control the flow of energy from source to load. See, power electronics is a technology associated with efficient conversion and control of electric power by power electronic devices. The goal of power electronics is to control the flow of energy from source to load. So basically this power electronics is going to convert the energy from one format to another format in a very efficient manner. It is the meaning of this power electronics. So see, you can see here that there is a source and there is a load here. So energy is going to convert from source to load. So here we are we are going to use the control in such a manner. So therefore the loss are very less. So power processing unit. So in this we are going to use the power electronic devices. So because of this power processing unit only, we are going to control the losses. So we are going to minimize the losses with the help of this power electronics devices. So power electronics is a technology associated with efficient conversion and control of electric power by power electronic devices. It's efficient we are going to convert from the power from source to load. It's efficient we are going to transfer the power from source to load with the help of this power processing unit and the control. Here only we are going to use the power electronic devices. So the goal of power electronics is to control the flow of energy from source to load. By using power electronic devices, harmonics are injected into the system. By using power electronic devices, harmonics are injected into the system. And this increases the power losses and the power factor decreases. So by using proper filter, we have to reduce this. So here, with the help of power electronic devices, means if you are going to use the power electronic devices, harmonics are going to inject it into the system. So whenever the harmonics are injected means the frequency increases. So therefore the power loss also goes on increases. As the power loss increases, the power factor of the system goes on decreases. So here, by using the proper filter, we have to reduce this. So one of the important drawbacks of using the all electronic devices in the power processing unit which is they are going to inject a lot amount of harmonics into the system. Harmonics are going to have huge amount of frequency. So this because of this frequency lot amount of power losses are going to occur and also the power factor of the system is goes on decreases. So by using the proper filter we have to reduce this. The losses during the change of state from on to off and off to on is called as switching losses. The losses during the change of state from on to off and off to on is called as switching losses. So basically, whenever you are going to switch from on to off or off to on, during that small amount of time, the losses which are going to occur in the power tool devices is called as switching losses. 
The Lhasa stool that change of stool from on to off and off to on is called as two Lhasa swings. Whenever the electron device is switching from on to off or off to on, during a small amount of time, some amount of losses are going to get occurred. Some amount of loss are going to get occurred during that small amount of time. That losses we are going to count as the switching losses in the electronic devices. The losses during the conduction period is called as the conduction losses. The losses during the conduction period is called as the conduction losses. So during the conduction period, whatever the losses in the electronic devices is called as the conduction losses. During the switching, we are going to call it as the switching losses, whereas during the conduction is, is called as the conduction losses. In ideal switch, all losses are zero, or in practical switch, switching loss is greater than the conduction loss. So in the ideal switch, all the losses, the conduction loss and also the, the switching losses both are zero. Whereas in the practical case, and whereas in the practical switch, the switching losses are very higher than the conduction losses. So in the ideal switch, all the conduction losses and also the switching losses all are zero. Whereas in the practical one, the switching losses are very higher when compared to the conduction losses. So this is a thyristor. So this is a basically a thyristor or a SCR. So anode cathode gain. And also this is going to have a, like this characteristics of this this devices like this format. See and I already told you it is going to block the forward voltage whenever you are not going to give any gate current. So after that, after that breakover voltage, the current is going to get conduct to the voltage drop of zero. Whereas if you give a negative voltage, it is going to block it. So it is called as the, so therefore this is the voltage, this current is equal to zero in this format. So we can say, is here is set in dual, dual directional, bipolar and semi-controlled. Whereas this device, whereas this transistor, you can see it transistor and a diode. See, if you give a, if you give A as positive, A as negative. So it is basically transistor. So transistor means here, I have already told you, a transistor can have this type of format. See, whenever, so whenever you are not going to give any base current, whenever you are not going to give any base current, the switch is open. So therefore, the current is zero and it is going to block the voltage. But when you are given the base current, the switch is on, so therefore the current is going to get connected. If you give a negative voltage, if you give negative voltage, this diode is open, so therefore current is equal to zero and the voltage it is going to block. So this is the graph you are going to get. Similarly, for this type of transistor also, if you keep in a reverse fashion, I have already told you, whenever the base current is zero, if, if suppose A is positive, A is negative, suppose if you give a base current as zero, the switch is open, so therefore it is going to block the forward voltage. When you have given the base current, the switch is on, so it is going to connect the forward current. And if you give a negative voltage, if you give the negative voltage, so for this graph, for these devices, for these three devices, this is the graph. So we have seen this one and also this one. But now, when you give the negative voltage, this device, this diode is going to get connected. So therefore, the reverse current is possible to the voltage drop of zero. So this is the thing you are going to get. Similarly, for this case also, so I already told you, when A is positive, K is negative, I already told you, whenever the base current is zero, it can block the forward voltage. Whenever the base current is not zero, it is conducting. So therefore, this is the case you are going to get. So now, if you give the negative voltage, means this diode is going to get connected. So because of that, too much current is possible. So therefore, with the voltage drop of zero, so you are going to get this format. Similarly, SCR with an antiparallel diode, I have already told you, if you give a positive voltage, it can block, it can block the forward voltage whenever the gate current is zero. And after that, it is going to have the conduction in the forward region. If you give negative voltage, this diode is going to get connected. So therefore, current is going to get flow the voltage drop of zero. So for these three devices, this is the graph and for these two devices, this is the graph. In a material, when doping increases, then conductivity of material increases. In a material, when doping increases, then conductivity of material increases. Means here, if you are trying to, if you are trying to, uh, means in a material, if you increase the doping, then you can say the conductivity of the material is also increases. So in a material, when doping increases, then conductivity of material also increases. So, by increasing the doping in a material, the conductivity of the material is also goes on increases. So, we are going to compare three types of diodes. General purpose diode, fast trigger diode and short key diode. And we are going to compare these three diodes of different parameters. 
So reverse ritual time of general purpose they have reached 25 microseconds. Whereas the fast ritual they have has 5 microseconds. Whereas the short they have has nanoseconds. So it's a very very fast. The reverse ritual time is it, it can be easily be turned off. So the turn off of uh, short the diode is very higher when compared to the two diodes. Ampere. The general purpose diode is used in ampere to kilo ampere. Whereas here just x into 100 ampere x is less than 10 means it is in terms of amperes only whereas the short diode it is in only 300 ampere so the rating of this is very much lower when compared to 2 the voltage rating of the general purpose diode is from 50 to 50 kV whereas the fast diode diode is only 3 kV whereas this is 100 volt only the applications the general purpose diode is mostly used in the rectifier Whereas the fast diode diode is used in the inverter and the chopper, whereas the short diode is used in the SMPS. So energy is equal to integration of power into dt. So is equal to integration of P of t is nothing but V of t into I of t into dt. So therefore energy is the area under the power into time graph. So area under the power and time graph is called as the energy or simply integration of V of t into I of t into dt. Fourier series is the representation of any non-sinusoidal periodic function into sine or cosine file form. So if anything, if see if anything is a periodic signal, we can write in terms of sine and cosine. So if any signal is a periodic, we can write in terms of sine and cosine. So Fourier series is a is a representation of any non-sinusoidal periodic function in terms of sine and cosine wave form. So now we are going to discuss the now wave and control rectifier. In half wave and control rectifier means simply we can say that it is a diode circuit, single phase diode circuit. So half wave means only one pulse is going to be present in the output, uncontrolled means we are going to use the diode. So it's a rectifier means AC to DC. So when we keep the resistor load and when RL load and L load, we are going to compare these three things. So for R load, for R load the average value is nothing but here Vm by 5. Whereas L load, the average value is G load. So therefore, for RL load, for RL load, which is Vm by 2 pi into, see this is cos alpha minus cos beta. So here, cos alpha, alpha is nothing but here, we are going to get 0. So cos 0 is equal to 1. So therefore, 1 minus cos beta. So Vm by 2 pi into 1 minus cos beta. Whereas the B, extinction angle, for extinction angle means the current is going to become 0 at pi whereas for L 2 pi whereas for RL it is going to lie between these two things pi to 2 pi whereas the average value of the current in case of R load which is V naught average by R whereas for L load which is Vm by omega L so for as for R L load also it is equal to V naught average by R because V naught average is equal to I naught average into R plus V L average as V L average is equal to 0 so therefore I naught average is equal to V naught average by R. Similarly, I naught maximum is going to occur in resistor load at pi by 2, whereas for L load at pi, whereas for R L load is going to occur in between these two things, pi by 2 to pi. A large value of L continuous conduction mode of beta is equal to pi will be possible, or by inserting free wheel in diode, we can make this possible. So, for large value of L, continuous conduction mode of beta is equal to pi will be possible, or by inserting free wheel in diode, we can make this possible. So basically, you can make the continuous conduction mode by two cases, by uh, two possible cases. Means by uh, two possible ways, we can make the continuous conduction mode in the current, which is by using the large value of the inductance in the load, or simply we can prefer the free wheel diode. So either in the two, either by these two methods, we can make the continuous conduction, which is beta is equal to pi we are going to get possible. So therefore, either you use the large value of the inductance or either you use the free wheel diode. So by either of these two methods, we can make the continuous conduction is possible. So for large value of L, continuous conduction mode of beta is equal to 2 pi will possible or by inserting free wheel diode, we can make this possible. Similarly, integration of f of t into dt. So integration of time period t1 into f of t into dt, it is nothing but this is an area under the f of t and time graph. So here f of t with respect to time, the area under the f of t with respect to time graph, that is the meaning of this one. So area under the f of t during the time interval. So during the time interval, we are going to find what is the area under this graph. Activity possesses best qualities of both BJT and also MOSFET. 
have already told you, IGB is the combination of the BJD and MOSFET. So what are the best qualities which are present in BJD and MOSFET? Both are going to include in the IGBD. So IGBD produces best qualities of both BJD and MOSFET. That is high input impedance like MOSFET. So MOSFET is going to have the high input, high input impedance. So this property is also present in the IGBD and low on state power losses as in BJT. So BJT has the low on state power loss. So therefore, this is also present in the IGBT. So IGBT is going to have the high input impedance like MOSFET and low on state power loss like BJT. And the operating frequency of IGBT is 50 kilohertz, whereas the MOSFET it is 1 megahertz. So operating frequency of the IGBT is less when compared to MOSFET. So if you compare BJT, IGBT and MOSFET, the operating frequency of BJT is less than the operating frequency of the IGBT is less than the operating frequency of the MOSFET. So and the operating frequency of IGBT is 50 kilohertz, whereas the MOSFET is 1 megahertz, which is 20 times lesser, which is 20 times lesser. So we can say IGBT frequency is 20 times lesser than the MOSFET. And IGBT is free from second breakdown problem which is present in BJT. So IGBT is free from second breakdown problem which is present in BJT. So we can say clearly that IGBT is a, is a, is a, is a combination of the BJT and also MOSFET. So we can say that it has the best qualities of both the BJT and also MOSFET. So we can say simply it, it has a high input impedance like MOSFET and low offset power losses like uh, uh, BJT. And also the operating frequency of IGBT is lesser than the operating frequency of the MOSFET. And also IGBT is free from secondary breakdown when compared to BJT. So secondary breakdown is present in the BJT but it is absent in the IGBT. So now we are going to compare the devices BJT, IGBT and MOSFET. So we are going to compare the BJT, IGBT and MOSFET. So here input drive which is BJT is a current control device whereas the IGBT is a voltage control device. Similarly, the MOSFET is also a voltage control device. See, it means that here the base current is going to control the connected current, whereas the VGS is going to control the gain current, and here also the VGS is going to control the gain current. Or the current, here the VGS is going to control the connected current, and here VGS is going to control the gain current. So that is why we can say VGS is a current control device, IGBT is a voltage control device, and the MOSFET is a voltage control device. And the input resistance of BJT is very less, whereas IGBT and MOSFET has huge amount of high resistance because of insulation is going to present between the gate and the, the region. So because of that, it is going to have the high input resistance, whereas the BJT is less. The voltage rating of BJT is very lower, whereas IGBT, it is greater than the 1 kV, high but less than 1 kV. Means the voltage rating of IGBT is very higher than MOSFET than BJT and also we can say that BJT is a bipolar device whereas the MOSFET and IG, see MOSFET is a unipolar device as the IGBT is also a bipolar device so we can say BJT is a bipolar device IGBT is a bipolar device whereas the MOSFET is a unipolar device BJT is a bipolar device and whereas IGBT is a bipolar device whereas the MOSFET is a unipolar device so I already told you, BJT has the less input impedance, low conduction losses and high switching losses. So we can say that here, I have already told you BJT, so BJT is going to have the low input impedance, so less input impedance and low on state power, low on state conduction losses, so low on state conduction losses but high switching losses. So BJT is going to have the less input impedance, low on state conduction losses and high switching losses. Whereas the MOSFET is going to have the high input impedance, high conduction losses and low string losses. So it is opposite of these two things. So MOSFET is going to have the high input impedance, high conduction losses and low string losses. So this is quite opposite to the BJT. Whereas IGBT it is going to have the best qualities of these two things. So moderate input impedance, moderate conduction losses and the moderate switching losses. So IGBT is the somewhat between these two things. So therefore, BJT has the less input impedance, low onset conduction losses and high switching losses. Whereas the MOSFET will have the high input impedance, high conduction losses and low switching losses. Whereas IGBT is going to have the moderate input impedance, moderate conduction losses and the moderate switching losses. 
voltage rating of NGBT is very higher than the MOSFET than the BJT. So BJT is a current control device whereas the IGBT is a voltage control device. I have already told you BJT is a current control device whereas the IGBT and the MOSFET is a voltage control device. IGBTs are available at higher voltage ratings than power MOSFETs because of increment in on state voltage drop is less than IGBT. See, I have already told you here it is going to have it is going to have both the weak characteristics of VJD and MOSFET. So IGBTs are going to available at higher voltage ratings when compared to power MOSFETs because of increment in on state voltage drop is less than IGBT. Means the voltage drop is very lesser in IGBT. So because of that only we are going to use it at higher voltage ratings. So IGBTs are available at higher voltage ratings when compared to power MOSFETs because the voltage drop is very less in IGBT. So because of increment in on state voltage drop is less than IGBT. So because of voltage drop in IGBT is very less. So therefore IGBTs are available at higher voltage ratings when compared to power MOSFETs. IGBTs and power MOSFETs have different structure structure. So IGBT and the power MOSFETs has different substrate structure means we can say that the configuration of both of things are different. So IGBT and power MOSFETs have different substrate structures. In choppers, we assume that I0 is equal to constant, which is load current. So therefore, in choppers, we are going to assume that the load current is constant. That is the thing that we are going to assume. The average voltage across inductor is zero, and the average current across the capacitor is zero. This point I always told you, the average value of the inductor voltage is always equal to zero, and the average value of the capacitor current is always equal to zero. In order to reduce the ripple in voltage, place capacitor in parallel across any group. So if you want to reduce the ripple in the voltage across the load, then place the capacitor in parallel across that load. So if you want to reduce the ripple in the output voltage across the load, then try to place a capacitor in parallel between the, in parallel to the load. So therefore, this ripple is going to get reduced. So in order to reduce the ripple in voltage, place capacitor in parallel across the load because the capacitor, the voltage cannot change instantaneously. So the rate of changing is very slower. In order to reduce ripple in current, place conductor in series with the load. So if you want to decrease the ripple in the current in the current, current in the load, then you have to keep the inductor in series with the load. So if you want to decrease the amount of ripple in the, the current in the load, then you have to keep the inductor in series with the load because the current in the inductor cannot change instantaneously. So it, it changes very slow. So because of that, the ripple is very much lower. In order to turn off SCR, reverse the supply voltage which is VAP less than 0 or arrange the circuit so that it can make IA less than IH. So by either of these two methods we can make the SCR to turn off. Because SCR is a semi-control device only we can turn on but not turn off. Turn off is purely dependent upon the circuit only. So therefore if you want to turn off, turn off the SCR then try to make the VAK less than 0 or simply try to uh, try to reduce the higher current which is below the holding current. So by either of these two measures we can confirm that SCR is going to get turned off. So therefore in order to turn off the SCR, reverse the supply voltage which is VAK less than 0 or any circuit so that I is less than IH. So commutation. Commutation is basically SCR is a semi-control device only we can turn on but not turn off. So sometimes we have to forcefully turn off the SCR with the help of some circuit that is called as a commutation. So we can go for natural commutation or the line commutation or the forced commutation. So there are two ways that we can turn off. There are two methods which are the natural way or the line commutation or the forced commutation. This natural commutation means basically supply voltage with the help of supply voltage keeping negative we are going to turn off. Whereas the forced commutation means we are by using some external circuit we are trying to forcefully switch off this transistor or the SCR which are the disclassified into four types which are the class A, class B, class C and class D. So class A is called as a load commutation, whereas the class B is called as a current commutation, whereas the class A is called as the impulse of the complementary commutation, and the class D is called as a voltage commutation. So forced commutation is classified into four types, class A commutation, class B commutation, class A commutation and the class D commutation. So class A commutation is also called as the load commutation, whereas the class B commutation is also called as the current commutation. Whereas the class A commutation is also called as the impulse of the complementary commutation, whereas the class D commutation is also called as the voltage commutation. So by either of these four ways, 
by giving the external circuit, we are going to switch off the SCR. So natural commutation means if the nature of the supply support the commutation, then it is known as the line commutation. Yes, with the help of the supply voltage only, we are going to make it negative. So therefore, we are going to turn off. It is called as the natural commutation. So basically, this type of it is used in rectifiers, AC voltage controllers, or cyclo converters. In this AC voltage source is used because here the natural commutation is with the help of the supply voltage only. We are going to turn off the SCR. So this type of is mostly used in rectifiers and also AC voltage controller is also called as the cyclo converters. So in this we are going to use the AC voltage source. So this method is preferred for rectifiers and also the cyclo converters or AC voltage controllers. So now we are going to discuss the type of loads. So voltage stiff. Voltage stiff means waveform of I node and V node is same. So for R node, see if the if the waveform of output current and the output voltage is same, then we say it is a voltage stiff. Means for R load, for R load we can say that the waveform of V node and I node is same. So therefore, the the amount of power absorbed by the load is equal to V dot R M square by R, R is equal to I dot R M square into R. Suppose for R E load, for R E load, the amount of power absorbed by the load is equal to I dot R M square into R plus E into I dot average. So therefore, here for R load. The amount of power absorbed by the load is equal to P dot is equal to I dot R M square into R R is equal to V dot R M square by R. Whereas for R E load, the amount of power absorbed by this load is equal to I dot R M square into R plus E into I dot average. Current stiff means I dot doesn't change suddenly, whereas the waveform of I dot and V dot are not similar. Like example R R E load and R E load. So I dot doesn't change suddenly. Waveform of I dot and V dot are not similar. Example is R L and R L load. So we can see current stiff means we can say that simply the nature of the voltage, output voltage and the output current waveform of they are different in nature. And also the current waveform is not going to change suddenly because the inductor is going to be present in the load. So simply we can say that the nature of the output voltage and the output current graphs are different. And also we can simply say that here. The current is not going to change suddenly because the load is going to have the inductor. So this is basically used whenever the load is having inductor. This, like example, R L load and R L load. So therefore, the average amount of power absorbed by the load is equal to V dot average into I dot average. So now we are going to discuss the extension angle. Extension angle means beta up to what angle the I dot of P exists. So up to what angle the I dot of P is going to exist. So up to what angle. The output current is going to exist. That is called as the extension angle. So, up to what angle the output current is going to get exist? Circuit turn off time. Circuit turn off time means the resolution is PC. Time for which the device is reversed by us in one full cycle. So, the time for which the the time for which the device is reversed by us in one full cycle is called as the circuit turn off time. So, circuit turn off time means here the time for which The device is reversed by us in one full cycle. The time for which the the device is reversed by us in one full cycle is called as the circuit turn off time. Or simply we can say that the time for which the the time for which a negative voltage is going to apply across the device in a one full cycle is called as the circuit turn off time. A single phase off phase uncontrolled rectifier. The waveform of I S and I N are same for all types of load except R L with free wheeling diode. See, whenever there is no extra branch in the load, then we can say that always the source current is equal to load current. If there is a some extra branch in the load, parallel branch in the load, then we can simply say that the source current is not all equal to load current. So, in single phase half phase uncontrolled rectifier, the waveform of I S and I not, which is source current and the load current, are same for all types of load except for R L with free wheeling diode circuit. Means whenever a load is going to have a parallel branch. Then we can then we can conclude that the source current is not all equal to load current. Otherwise, the source current is always equal to load current. If two or more diodes are connected in common cathode configuration, if two or more diodes are connected in common cathode configuration, then the diode whose anode potential is maximum will conduct. See, whenever if more than two diodes are going to connect in common cathode configuration, then who then whichever the diode is going to have the maximum anode potential. That diode is going to get connected. So, if two or more diodes are connected in common cathode configuration, then the diode whose anode potential is maximum will conduct. So, 
So if two or more diodes are connected in common cathode configuration, then the diode whose hard potential is maximum is going to be conducted. In choppers and inverters, we use the DC supply. In choppers and inverters, we use the DC supply and we need fully controlled switches. So we need force computation circuit for turning of S here. See, in choppers and inverters, means the input is a DC supply. So here, if you want to use the ACRs, then definitely they should be fully controllable. So only the fully controllable switches are going to use in choppers and inverters. So in choppers and inverters, we use the DC supplies input. So we need the fully controlled switches. So we need force compression circuit for turning of AC. So in choppers and inverters, basically we are going to use the input as DC supply. Then two. So if you are see, we are going to use only fully controlled switches in the inverters and choppers. So if you are going to use the ACR, then definitely we have to use the forced computation circuits to turn on the ACRs. Inputs are complementary computation is used in current source inverter and also parallel inverters. So this type of inputs are complementary computation is mostly preferred in the current source inverter and the parallel inverters. So in these inverters, we are going to use this computation in order to turn on the ACRs or thyristors. So therefore, we can say that impulse or the complement computation is preferred in current source inverters and the parallel inverters to turn off the thyristors. Directing factor is equal to 1 minus. So directing factor is equal to 1 minus which is V rated by number of series connected into voltage rating of each SCR. So listen carefully, this is directing factor is equal to. So directing factor is equal to 1 minus 1 minus V rated V rated by number of series elements into voltage rating of each ACR. So D rating factor is equal to 1 minus V rated by number of series elements connected into voltage rating of each device. So it, suppose in terms of current, current then, D, then D rating factor is equal to 1 minus I rated by N parallel into IR. So therefore D rating factor is equal to 1 minus V rated by NAC into voltage rating of each ACR. Whereas D rating factor is equal to 1 minus I rated by N parallel into I rated. So therefore, with the help of these things, we are going to get the number of elements in a number of SLs created in a series connection we are going to get. Whereas by this equation, we are going to get number of uh, parallel paths are going to required, we are going to say with the help of this equation. So D rating factor is equal to 1 minus V rated by NAC into V rated of each SL. Similarly, directing factor is equal to 1 minus I rated by N parallel into IR. Where IR and VR are called as the voltage rating of each SCR and IR is called as the current rating of each SCR. So the control or conversion of electric energy from one form to other form by using semiconductor devices is called as the power electronics. So what is the meaning of power electronics means the control or conversion of electric energy from one form to another form by using semiconductor devices is called as a power electronics. Means we are going to efficiently convert the one form of energy to other form with the help of the semiconductor devices it is called as a power electronics. The control or conversion of electric energy from one form to another form by using semiconductor devices is called as a power electronics. Input is a fixed value and the output has to be a desired value. So input is always a fixed value but output we need as per required. So therefore output should be a desired value. With the help of this power electronics, we are trying to make what is desired for a given output. The available sources are AC and DC in nature. So in nature, the sources are of two types. Either it is a DC source or either it is a AC source. Only these two types of sources are going to be available in nature. Thyristors contains the following devices. Thyristors contains the following devices which are the SCR, GTO, RCT, ASCR and triad. So we can say that, see, in Thyristor is a family, it's a family group name. So in that family group, this is going to contain SCR, GTO, RCT, ASCR and triad. So SCR means semi-controlled rectifier, GTO means gate turn off. And see, GTO is going to have the less gate turn off. So ratio, so the turn off ratio of GTO is very, very lower value. So and also the reverse connecting type, reverse connecting thyristor and asymmetrical, asymmetrical uh, SCR, so asymmetrical SCR and triad. 
So all these things are going to become a one family under the Thanisters. Thanisters is a family name and all these devices are going to belong to them. Thanisters is a Thanister is a combination of thyretron tube and transistor. So thyristor is a combination of thyretron tube and transistor. So you can see clearly this thyristor is a name, it is a combination of thyretron tube and also transistor. So thyretron tube and transistor, if you combine both these two things properties, we are going to make the thyristor. So thyristor is a combination of the thyretron tube and also transistor. So by the help of these two combinations only we are going to make the thyristors. So these characteristics are the same as thyretron tube and construction is same as transistor. So the characteristics are same as thyretron tube and construction is same as transistor. So whatever the characteristics of the thyristor is equal to the characteristics of the thyretron tube and the construction is same as the transistor. So because of that only we can call this as the thyristor is a combination of the thyretron tube and also transistor. So its characteristics are equal to the thyretron tube and the construction is same as the transistor. Light triggering for thyristors is used in high voltage DC transmission systems. Light triggering for thyristors is used in high voltage DC transmission systems. So in high voltage DC transmission systems, means like in HVDC we are going to use the thyristors. So if you want to trigger those thyristors, we are going to use the light triggering method. So by using the light triggering method, we are going to turn on the thyristors whenever we are going to use them in the HVDC transmission. So, light triggering is used to is used for turning on thyristors if you are using the thyristors in the high voltage DC transmission systems. The example is LAS CR, this called as the light activated SCR. So, whenever the SCRs which are used in the HVDC, we are going to turn on or the trigger them with the help of the light triggering method. So, some of the example is LAS CR, which is a light activated SCR. Thyristor is turned on by using pulse gate triggering because this is the most efficient method among all the turn on methods. See there are different turn on methods we have studied. Out of all those turn on methods, pulse triggering is the pulse gate triggering is the most efficient when compared to remaining all other turn on methods of thyristor. Thyristor is turned on by using pulse gate triggering because this is the most efficient method among all the turn on methods. So there are different turn on methods we have studied. Out of them, the air pulse triggering is the most efficient one and this, this method we use to turn on the SCR. Our electronics converter which converts fixed AC to the desired value of DC by using power semiconductor device is called as phase control rectifier and if supply is single phase then we call it as a single phase control rectifier and if the supply is three phase then we call it as a three phase control rectifier. So here Basically, the power electronic converter, the power electronic converter which converts the fixed AC to desired value of DC by using power semiconductor device is called as the phase control rectifier. And if supply is single phase, then we call it as the single phase control rectifier. And if the supply is three phase, then we call it as the three phase control rectifier. So basically, we can say that the rectifier, the phase control rectifier means we are going to convert the fixed AC into a desired value of DC, desired value of DC by using the power semiconductor devices. If the supply is single phase, we call it as a single phase control rectifier and if the supply is three phase, then we call it as a three phase control rectifier. So if supply is three phase, then we call it as a three phase control rectifier. The advantages of using free wheeling diode are, so the advantages of using the free wheeling diode are, average output voltage is always positive. So with the help of using the free wheeling diode, the output, voltage, the output voltage will be always positive, so therefore with the help of that, the average value of the output voltage is also goes on increases. Supply power factor is improved because the supply power factor is directly proportional to the V0 average, so therefore as the V0 average increases, the input power factor is also improved or simply supply power factor is improved. So efficiency of the converter will be increased, so efficiency of the converter will also be increased. So with the help of free wheeling diode, we can simply say that the average value of the output voltage increases, the input power factor or the supply power factor is also increased and also efficiency of the converter is also increased. If THD is less for a converter, then that converter is more efficient. So whenever the THD is very less, means the harmonics are less, the harmonics are less, then only THD is less, so therefore that is the most efficient one. 
if PhD is more means there are more harmonics. So it is not a very efficient one because lot of loss are going to get happen. So therefore, if PhD is less for a converter means there are very less amount of harmonics. So less amount of harmonics means less amount of losses. So it is highly efficient. So if the THD is less for a converter, then that converter is said to be more efficient converter. THD of single phase semiconductor is less than single phase fully controlled converter. So semiconductor has better performance than non full converter. So THD of single phase semiconductor is less than single phase fully controlled converter. So semiconductor has better performance than full converter. So THD of single phase semiconductor is lesser than the THD of single phase full converter. Fully controlled converter. So therefore, semiconductor has better performance than the full converter. So if you compare the THD of single phase semiconductor and the single phase fully controlled rectifier, so or single phase fully controlled rectifier or converter, we can say that simply the THD of single phase semiconductor is very lesser than the THD of the single phase fully controlled rectifier. So therefore, we can say that as the THD is less, so its efficiency or the performance is very higher. So single phase semiconductor has the better performance and more efficient than the single phase full controlled converter. In single phase dual converter, a two full converters contain antiparallel to do four current operation. I have already told you in single phase dual converter. In single phase dual converter, a two a two full converters contain antiparallel to do four current operation. So if you are going to if you are going to keep the two full converters back to back or antiparallel then we can say that simply it is going to give you four current operation, four current operation which is called as the single phase dual converter. So the single phase dual converter, the two full converters converted in anti-parallel to give a four current operation. The power electronic converter which converts fixed DC value into a desired AC is called as the inverter. So basically the power electronic converter which converts the fixed DC into a desired AC is called as the inverter. So simply inverter means here it is going to convert the fixed DC into a variable DC, variable AC of variable frequency. So therefore, the means, the inverter means is going to convert the fixed DC into a variable AC of variable frequency to this following an inverter. So the power electronic converter which converts the fixed DC into a variable DC means the magnitude is variable and also the frequency is also variable, it is called as an inverter. The single phase voltage source inverter, we use switches which are forced converted transistors. So, GTO transistors like BJP, MOSFET, LGBT, all these are fully controlled devices. So, therefore, I have already told you in the choppers, in the choppers and also in the inverters, we are going to use the fully controlled devices. So, in single phase voltage source inverter, we use switches which are forced commutative transistors, GTO transistors like BJP, MOSFET, LGBT, all these are fully controlled devices because I have already told you in the choppers and inverters, we are going to use the fully controlled devices. Fully controlled devices only we are going to use. So the examples are the force covered transistors. Yes, we can turn on and turn off. GTO is also a fully controlled device. Tech transistors like BJT, MOSFET, and LGBT are also fully controlled devices. So only the fully controlled devices are going to use in the inverters and also in the choppers. Single phase wool bridge inverter would deliver four times more power than single phase half bridge power. So this is the thing that you need to remember. A single phase full bridge inverter to deliver four times more power than single phase average inverter. So the amount of power delivered by single phase full bridge is four times the power delivered by the single phase average inverter. So this is a very important point that you need to remember. So this type of questions are mostly asked in examination. So therefore, a single phase full bridge inverter would deliver four times the more power than a single phase half bridge inverter. So, a single phase full bridge inverter would deliver the four times more power than a single phase half bridge inverter. So, with circulating current mode, the dual converter has more size and low efficiency. So, with the circulating current mode, dual converter has more size and less efficiency. I have already told you, dual converter means you are going to keep the two full converters and a parallel. So, if you are going to use it in circulating current mode, then we have to include more number of components. So like like index also you have to include. So because of that the size is increases and also efficiency is also decreases. So with circulating current mode, the dual converter has more size and less efficiency because in dual converter if you want to prefer to use the circulating current mode, then we have to use the more number of devices like inductors. So because of that the size is increases and also the efficiency is also decreases.
in single phase cycles in single phase cycle or converter we can use to step up or step down the input supply frequency so basically cyclo converter means it is going to convert the ac into ac fixed ac into variable ac or variable magnitude and also variable frequency that is called the cyclo converter or ac voltage controller so single phase cyclo converter can be used to step up or step down the input supply frequency so the output frequency can be less than input frequency it can be even greater than the input frequency that is the meaning of the cyclo converter so let me take here f0 is equal to n into f5 so output frequency is n times the input frequency here n is always an integer value n is always an integer value so therefore f0 is called as the output frequency and f5 is called as the input frequency so cyclo converter is basically it is going to convert the fixed ac into a variable ac so variable ac output means variable magnitude and also variable frequency so frequency can be lesser than the output frequency can be lesser than the input frequency and the output frequency can be greater than the input frequency so therefore f0 is equal to n into f5 n is always an integer and f0 is called as the output frequency and f5 is called as the input frequency in acr d by dt production is achieved through the use of in acr d by dt production is achieved through the use of rc across acr and when rc connected parallel to acr the circuit is known as a subbus circuit so if you want to produce the acr under that means the rate of rise of voltage we have to use a rc circuit in parallel across the acr so therefore this is called the subbus circuit so if you want to produce the acr under the d by dt production then you have to use a rc in parallel with the acr so this circuit is called as the snubber circuit so therefore the rate of rise of potential is very low and if you keep a r circuit in parallel with the scr so in scr d by dt production is achieved through the use of rc across the scr and when rc is connected parallel to scr the circuit is called as the snubber circuit so always the latching current is always 2 to 3 times greater than the holding current so the latching current is always 2 to 3 times greater than the holding current in a switch capacitor network war compensation the acs are commuted by resistance comm- commutation so in a switch capacitor network war compensation the acs are commuted by resistance commutation so in a particular operation like switch capacitor network war compensation here acs are going to be turned off by a method which is called as a resistance commutation so in this application like the switch capacitor network war compensation in this we are going to turn off the scrs by a resonant commutation so in a switch capacitor network war compensation the scrs are converted by resonant commutation resonant commutation in this overall circuit becomes under damped and naturally zero obtain so under damped means here the options are going to get reduced so naturally you are going to get the current as zero so resonant commutation in this overall circuit becomes under damped and the natural zero is going to obtain so, so therefore by using the resident completion only we are going to turn off the scr in a switch network capacitor war compensation so resident computation in this overall circuit becomes under damp and the natural zero is going to get obtained so by using this method only we are going to turn off the scr in a switch capacitor network war compensation so in a switch capacitor network war compensation the scrs are Computed or the turn off by resident computation means the resident computation in this overall circuit is going to becomes under damped and the natural current zero is going to obtain. Thyristor is most suitable device for DC to DC converter. Thyristor is most suitable device for DC to DC converter. So DC to DC converter is called the chopper. So in chopper we are going to use we are going to use only the fully controlled switches. So therefore thyristor is going to use. with the help of force combination circuits we are going to use with our code of the thyristors so triac is a three terminal bidirectional device switch i have already told you triac is a three terminal bidirectional switch so it can connect in the two ways means the current can flow in the both the directions now of time of converter grid scrs are normally 50 to 200 microseconds so turn off time of converter grid scrs are normally 50 to 200 microseconds so this is the turn off time of the converter grid scrs converter grid scrs means by natural methods by natural computation methods only we are going to turn off this scrs so it takes lot amount of time so turn off time of converter grid scrs are normally in the terms of 50 to 200 microseconds because in here we are going to use the natural computation method to turn off so it takes more time just 
52 to 100 microseconds. Whereas the turnoff time of inverted grid ACR is very, very low because then we are going to use the force computation. So it is lesser than the 50 microseconds. So we can say that the turnoff time of the, the turnoff time of the, the turnoff time of the counter grid ACR are normally in terms of 50 to 400 microseconds. Whereas the turnoff time of the inverted grid ACR are normally 0 to uh, 50 microseconds because inverted grid ACR is going to use the force computations. So it can turn off very faster when compared to a counter grid ACRs. So in a DC DC converter, the duty ratio is equal to. So in a DC DC converter means in a chopper, duty ratio is the ratio of the control voltage by peak value of sawtooth voltage. So here yeah, this is the important point that you need to remember, which is in a DC to DC converter of the chopper, the duty ratio is the ratio of the control voltage by the peak value of sawtooth voltage. So in a DC DC converter, the duty ratio is nothing but it is a ratio of the control voltage by the peak value of solid voltage. So in a chopper, the duty ratio is nothing but it is a control voltage by peak value of solid voltage. So ratio of control voltage by peak value of solid voltage is called as the duty ratio in a DC chopper. So it is a ratio of the control voltage by peak value of the solid voltage. So ratio of control voltage by peak value of solid voltage. So it is a ratio of the control voltage by peak value of sawtooth voltage is called as the duty ratio. In a single phase full converter, the displacement factor is cos alpha. I have already told you, in a single phase full converter, the displacement power factor or the fundamental displacement or fundamental displacement factor is equal to cos alpha. Whereas in a single phase semiconductor, the fundamental the displacement factor is cos of alpha by 2. In a thyristor DC chopper, in a thyristor DC chopper current competition results in best performance. So, suppose in a chopper, in a chopper, if you want to use the thyristors, then which method is used to turn off thyristors in a very efficient manner. So, if you are going to use the thyristors in a DC chopper, then definitely to turn off these thyristors, we use the current computation because it is going to give you the best results or best performance. So, in, in a DC choppers, if you are going to use the thyristors, there we need the full control. So, if you want to turn off the thyristor, we are going to use the current computation because it is going to give you the best performance. A single phase fully controlled rectifier has an average output voltage. So a single phase fully controlled rectifier has an average output voltage which is V0 is equal to 2 Vm by pi cos alpha. It's a very important formula. Whereas a single phase semi-controlled semi -controlled rectifier has an average output voltage which is V0 is equal to Vm by pi into 1 plus cos alpha. That is the important points that you need to remember. So, latching is present only in thyristors but absent in transistors like BJP, MOSFET and IGBT. So, latching is the only concept, the latching is the only concept which is present in thyristors but it is totally absent in the transistors like BJP, MOSFET and IGBT. So, latching is the only concept which is going to be present in thyristors but it is absent in the transistors like BJP, MOSFET and IGBT. Pantograph is used to supply power to AC transformer in the locomotive. So, in a train, on the top of the tra on the top of the train, you can see some amount of straight line, like a, like a triangular shape, there is a line. So, it is going to use to supply the power to the AC transformer in the locomotive. So, with the help of this a pantograph, it is going to take the supply from the lines and it is going to give you the transformer which is going to present inside. The, this which is going to present inside this train. So, therefore, pantograph is used to supply power to AC transformer in locomotive means train. So, pantograph means it is a, some straight line on the top of the train you can see it is going to touch all the power lines. So, this line is, is going to touch the power lines. So, it is going to absorb the power from the power lines and it is going to give you the transformer which is present inside. So, pantograph is used to supply power to AC transformer in locomotive. So, from the transformers, the motors and locomotive take the supply. So, from the transformers, the motors and locomotive takes the supply. Yes. So the motors are going to absorb the power from the transformer and then they are going to get rotated. So pantograph is used to supply power to as a transformer and locomotive and from the transformers the motors in locomotive takes the supply. The episodial speed time curve is a close approximation of the conditions in main line tra traction service. The episodial speed time curve is a close approximation of the conditions in main line traction service. So, the episodial speed time curve is a close approximation of the conditions in the main line traction service. So, if you observe the main line traction service, then you are going to get an approximate episodial speed time curve. So, an approximate 
trapezoidal speed time curve is called as the is, it is basically based on the mainline traction service. So based on the mainline traction service only we are going to get a curve which is exactly trapezoidal speed time curve. Resistance firing circuit is used to, is used to control the voltage. The range of firing angle is 0 degree to 90 degree. So the resistance firing the resistance firing circuit is used to control the voltage, the range of firing angle is 0 degree to 90 degree. But in R set triggering circuit, the range of firing angle is from 0 degree to 100 degree. So R set triggering is pivot over the resistance triggering because of larger value of firing angle. Basically, there are two methods: the resistance firing circuit and also R set triggering circuit. Or you can say the resistance firing circuit and the R set firing circuit. So with the help of Resistance firing circuit, we can get only the alpha from 0 to 90 degree, whereas with the help of RC, we can get the alpha from 0 degree to 100 degree. So, we sort of these two methods we prefer the RC triggering than the resistance fire triggering circuit. So, resistance firing circuit is used to control the voltage, the range of firing angle is only 0 degree to 90 degree, but in the RC triggering circuit, the range of firing angle is from 0 degree to 100 degree. So, RC triggering is preferred over the resistance triggering because of larger value of firing angle. So there are two methods for, for getting the value of alpha. There are two methods for triggering the thyristors. So the two methods are very simple which is the resistance triggering and the RC triggering. So with the, re with the help of resistance triggering we can get the alpha only from 0 degree to 90 degree whereas with the help of RC we can get from 0 degree to 180 degree. So RC is preferred because of RC is preferred than resistance because of here the larger value of the firing angle. Four current operation requires two full converters triggering back to back. I have already told you the four current operation requires requires two full converters triggering back to back or anti parallel. In dual converter, the circulating current mode allows smooth reverse current of load current with inputs to the response. So, in dual converter, the circulating current allows smooth reversal of load current with inputs to the response. So, because of this size also increases and the efficiency also decreases. So in dual converter, the circulating current allows smooth reversal of load current with inputs to the response. So in dual converter, the circulating current allows smooth reversal of load current with input speed of response. ACI is available with higher ratings than triad and more capable in, the, in regard to control the, than triad. So ACR is more preferred than triad. So ACR is available with higher ratings than triad and more capable in regard to control than triad. So, SCR is more preferred than SCR. So, SCR is more preferred than triad. See, see what is the reason for SCR is more preferred than triad means we can say that the SCR is going to available with huger ratings, higher voltage ratings when compared to triad and also the control, the controlling nature of the SCR is very easier when compared to triad. So, these are the two advantages. So, because of this only we are going to prefer the SCR when compared to triad. So, SCR is always preferred than triad because of two important reasons, which is SCR is always going to available in higher voltage ratings when compared to triad and also the control, the controlling of the SCR is very much easier when compared to triad. So, because of these two fundamental reasons only, SCR is more preferred than a triad. Voltage source inverter is employed when the source inductance is low and the load inductance is high. It's a very important point. This is most asked in examination. So, voltage source inverter is employed when the source inductance is low and the load inductance is high. Similarly, the current source inverter is employed when the source inductance is large and the load inductance is low. The input voltage of a single phase full wave AC voltage controller is V i of t. If the load is resistive and output voltage is V naught, then the input power factor is. So, here the input voltage of a single phase full wave AC voltage controller, AC voltage control is V of t, if the load is resistive and the output voltage is V naught, then the input power factor is equal to. See, for a single phase full wave AC voltage controller, the input is V of t and the output is V naught, RMS value is V naught, then what is the input power factor? So, I have already told you, Vs RMS into Is RMS into cos phi is equal to V naught RMS into I naught RMS. As IS RMS is equal to I naught RMS, it is going to get cancelled. So, the cos phi is equal to V naught RMS by V i RMS. This is called as the input power factor. IGBT and power MOSFETs are both voltage control devices. I have already told you, IGBT and power MOSFETs are both voltage control devices. IGBT can be designed for higher voltage ratings compared to power MOSFET. I have already told you, 
the ratings of the LGBT is very very higher when compared to poor MOSFETs. So whereas, whereas the, the frequency of treating of MOSFETs is very higher than the IGBT. Forced commutation is necessary in integral grade SCI. I have already told you this is forced commutation. This is actually commutation. So forced commutation is necessary in integral grade SCI. So there are two types of SCRs. Converter grade SCI and integral grade SCI. Converter grade SCI uses the natural commutation. So its turnover time is very high which is 50 to 200 microseconds. Whereas integral grade SCI is going to use the forced commutation technique to turn off the device. It means the turn of time is very less, which is 0 to 50 micro seconds. See, whenever the THD increases, whenever the THD increases, we can say that whenever the THD increases, what is going to happen? The loss are going to get happen more. So, as the loss are going to get happen very, very more, then we can say the active power consumed by the load is very less. So, therefore, the power factor is also goes on decreases. So, listen, whenever the THD increases, the harmonics increases. As the harmonics increases, the loss are increases. As the loss are increases, the actual power, the actual power comes in by the load decreases. As the actual power comes in by the load decreases, so therefore the power factor also moves on decreases. Single phase full converter with RL load is triggered at 30 degree when each device connects full. See, a single phase full converter, a single phase full converter with RL load is triggered at alpha is equal to 30 degree when each device connects full. I have already told you. In a single phase full converter, the conduction angle of each thyristor is pi. So therefore, each see respective of the alpha, the conduction angle of each thyristor in a single phase full converter is pi. So therefore, that is the RL degree. VJPT is a combination of the power MOSFETs and VJT. So it has high input impedance and low conduction losses. I have already told you, IGBT is the best combination of it's a combination of the power MOSFETs and VJT. So it has the good properties of both the MOSFET and also VJT. So MOSFET it has the high input impedance like MOSFET and it has low conduction losses like VJT. The main advantage of IGBT over SCR is self computing capability. The main advantage of IGBT over SCR is self commutating capability. So here IGBT is a fully controlled device. So you can on, you can off it. So this is the advantage of IGBT will come to SCR because SCR is a semi control device. So, because of that only we can say that IGBT is basically a current component and a transistor. They are, they are fully controlled devices. So, therefore, the main advantage of IGBT over SCR is self computing capability. Snapper circuit is used to protect the thyristor from the following, which is high DV by DT, over voltage, over current, high DI by DT, noise, respectively. These are electrical stresses. So, basically, Snubber circuit is used to put up the thyristor from the following, which is high dv by dt, higher voltage or over voltage, over current, high di by dt, noise respectively. So these are called as the electrical stresses. So snubber circuit is used to is, is, is used to put up the thyristor from the following, which is high dv high by dt, over voltage, over current, high di by dt, noise respectively. So these are called as the electrical stresses. So the percentage of fifth harmonic component in relation to polyamorphic component is 20 percentage in a single phase inverter which has square wave output voltage. So the percentage of fifth harmonic component, the percentage of fifth harmonic component in relation to fundamental component is 20 percentage in a single phase inverter which has a which has a square wave output voltage. So in a single phase inverter, whether it is a half uh, wave or full wave, so if you do the ratio of the if you, do, if you do the ratio of the fifth harmonic component to the fundamental component, only the peak values or the RMS values, you go for anything and if you multiply by 100, you are going to get the 20 percentage. So the percentage of fifth harmonic component in relation to the fundamental component is 20 percentage in a single phase inverter which has square wave output voltage. In a step down cyclo converter, natural computation is used. In a step down cyclo converter, Natural combustion is used to turn off the thyristors. So, I already told you, only in the inverters and choppers we are going to use the fully controlled devices. Whereas in AC cyclo converter, we can use the uh, thyristors only. So, therefore, in, in stable cyclo converters, natural combustion is used because the supply load is AC. So, therefore, natural combustion is used in order to turn off the thyristors. Purpose of free wheeling diode in a thyristor controlled AC to DC converter is to conduct the load current when the thyristor is turned off. 
The purpose of frame and diode in a thyristor control AC to DC converter is to conduct the load current when the thyristor is stored. So, in AC to DC converter means control rectifiers. In rectifier, the purpose of using the frame and diode at the load because whenever the thyristor is off, this frame and diode is going to get conducted. So, that is the main agenda of using the frame and diode. The purpose of frame and diode in a thyristor control AC to DC converter is to conduct the load current when the thyristor is turned off. Cryop cannot be used in AC voltage regulator because in inductive load, one SCR will be lashed into conduction and the other SCR will be unable to turn on. Cryops cannot be used in AC voltage regulator because in inductive load, one SCR will be lashed into conduction and the other SCR won't be able to turn on. See, cryops are not preferred for AC voltage regulator because in inductive load, so, one SCR will be lashed into conduction and the other SCR won't be able to turn on. So, this is the disadvantage of track using in the AC voltage regulator when we are going to use the inductive load. So, whenever we are going to use the inductive load, so in the inductive load if we are going to use the tracks for AC voltage controller, so one SCR may be turned on but another SCR will not be able to turn on. So, because of this, because of this disadvantage, we are not going to prefer to use the track in AC voltage regulator. So, tracks cannot be used in AC voltage regulator because in inductive load, one SCR will be large in the conduction and the other SCR won't be able to turn on. So, here tracks, if you use the tracks in AC voltage regulator for inductive loads, so one SCR may be turned on but the other SCR may not be turned on. So, therefore, this is the, the reason which is not used. So, these are the important points that you need to remember. In three phase of phase, in three phase of phase control rectifier, the peak inverse voltage is the line voltage or the maximum peak the peak value of the line voltage which is root 3 dm. So, in a three phase of phase, the peak inverse voltage of the thyristors or the diodes which is equal to peak value of the line voltage which is root 3 into vm. Whereas, in three phase full wave bridge rectifier, the peak inverse voltage is equal to vm. So, this is the important point that you need to remember. So, in a three phase, in a three phase of phase control rectifier, the peak inverse voltage is equal to maximum value of the line voltage which is root 3 into vm. Whereas, the Whereas in the three phase full wave bridge, recti bridge rectifier or converter, the peak inverse voltage is equal to maximum value of the phase voltage which is Vm. So in a three phase half wave control rectifier, the peak inverse voltage is equal to root 3 into Vm. Whereas in three phase full wave bridge rectifier, the peak inverse voltage is equal to Vm. In a LC series circuit connected to the DC supply of E volts. In a LC series circuit connected to the DC supply of E volts via a thyristor, when it's torn off, voltage across the thyristor is minus C. See, if you are going to connect an LC circuit with a thyristor and a supply voltage E, then what is the voltage across the, then what is the voltage across, across the thyristor, what is the voltage across the thyristor when the device is torn off. See, I have already told you here, whenever the device is torn off, the voltage across the capacitor is 2E, and the supply voltage is E, so E minus 2E is nothing but minus E. So, therefore, minus E is the voltage across the so, in a given LC series circuit, if you are going to connect the LC series series circuit to a supply voltage source through a thyristor, when the thyristor is turned off, the capacitor voltage is 2E. So, if you want to know what is the voltage across the thyristor, which is E minus 2E, which is equal to minus E. So, minus E is the voltage across the thyristor, so when the thyristor is turned off. In a two pulse bridge converter with a three million diode, the width of the diode current pulse over the one cycle is 2 alpha. In alpha is a firing angle. In a two pulse bridge converter with three wheeling diode, the width of the diode current pulse over one cycle is 2 alpha. But alpha is a firing angle. So, here, what I am trying to say is here, whenever we connect a full bridge converter with a three wheeling diode, it is going to act like a semi converter. Then, what is the conduction angle of the diode? What is the conduction angle of this three wheeling diode in a one full cycle, which is 2 alpha? So, therefore, if you are going to use the this full bridge converter with a free diode, it is going to act like a semi-converter. And the, what is the conduction of this free diode in a one full cycle is 2 alpha, where alpha is called as the firing angle. Two corner chopper is used for motoring and regenerative braking. So two corner chopper is used for motoring and also regenerative braking. So two corner chopper is used for motoring and also regenerative braking. I have already told you, see, the class A, class B, class C, class D and class E. Class A means first corner, class B means second corner, 
class e means first and second class d means first and fourth class e means all the problems so two column chopper is used for both the motoring and also the regenerative braking so in the motoring mode and the regenerating board see in the motoring mode and the regenerating board the supply voltage is always fixed whereas the current is going to get reverse in the motoring mode the motor is going to intake the current whereas in the regenerative braking the current is supplied by the motor so therefore we can say that two power chopper means first first power and also the second power so first power is used for the motoring mode whereas the second power is used for the regenerating mode because in motoring mode V not is positive and I not is positive. Whereas in the regenerating, V not is positive but I not is negative. So therefore, this power is a two power chopper is used for both the motoring, motoring and also regenerative braking. Three pulse converter has a free wheel diode across its load. So three pulse converter has a free wheel diode across its load. So three pulse converter has a free wheel diode across its load. Then the operating range of the converter is from zero degree to one degree. So in a three pulse converter in a three pulse converter if you are going to use the free wheel diode across its load then the operating range of the converter is only from 0 degree to 150 degree so if you are going to use the free wheel diode across the loads in a three pulse converter then the firing angle is from 0 degree to 150 degree in power mosfet the switching loss can be expressed as a function of drain to source capacitance so in a power mosfet the switching losses the switching losses can be expressed as a function of drain to source capacitance so drain to source capacitance so we can say that in power mosfet the switching losses can be expressed as a function of drain to source capacitance so in a power mosfet the switching losses we can compare we can miss the switching losses we can write in the function of a drain to source capacitance the voltage control methods of single phase voltage source inverter are the voltage control methods of single phase voltage source inverter are external voltage control which is external voltage control on input side external voltage control on the output side whereas the internal voltage control on the pwm technique see how to control the voltage see how to control the voltage in a voltage source inverter see base plate is going to convert voltage source inverter means it is going to convert a fixed dc into an ac so how to control the output voltage how to control the output voltage in this voltage source inverter we are going to discuss the methods are the external voltage control so external voltage control on the input side and external voltage control on the input side so on the output side so if you vary the input side voltage externally then you can vary the output voltage also if you can vary the external voltage across the output side also you can vary internal voltage control or pwm technique so with the help of pwm technique we are going to change the pulse width of this output voltage so with the help of this we are going to change the average value and also rms value so these are the methods by which we can control the output voltage average values so 120 degree mode of operation is more preferable than 180 degree mode because for every 60 degree only two resistors are going to connect and in each leg there is a gap of 60 degree so no more short circuiting so because short circuit is not at all possible in 120 degree when compared to 180 degree so in 120 degree only two resistors are going to connect in each 60 degree whereas in 180 degree three can three resistors are going to connect for every 60 degree so 180 degree mode of operation is more preferable than 180 degree mode because for every 60 degree only two resistors are going to connect in the 180 degree mode of operation and in each leg there is a gap of 60 degree so no more short circuiting so in a gap in a in a in a each leg there is a gap of 60 degree between the turning on of each devices in this each leg so because of that there is a no possible of short circuiting so it is mostly preferred one of these more most preferred than the one way the power electronic converter which converts the fixed dc into the desirable dc by using power semiconductor devices is called as chopper also called as dc to dc converter or dc kind of transformer the power electronic converter which converts the fixed dc into variable dc by using power semiconductor devices is called as chopper is also called as a dc to dc converter or dc kind of transformer so the power electronic converter which converts the fixed dc into variable into desirable dc or variable dc by using power semiconductor devices is called as a chopper it is also called as a dc to dc converter or dc kind of transformer see if any circuit which is which is like converting a fixed dc into variable dc with the help of power semiconductor devices it is called as a chopper or simply dc to dc converter it is also called as a dc equivalent of a transformer 
first step down and step up both are possible with the help of this chopper that is also called as a DC current of transformer. Classic commutation and classic commutation. Class A and classic commutation is used in inverted circuits and class B commutation and class D commutation is used in the chopper circuits. I wanted to tell you the important point here in choppers and inverters we are going to use only the fully controlled devices. If you want to use the tiny style in these inverters and choppers then it has to be fully controlled when it is semi controlled so you have to use the force commutation in order to turn off because the input is a DC supply. So because of this reason only in the voltage source inverter and the current source inverter, in the voltage source inverter in the inverters and also in the choppers the class A and class C combination is used for the inverters whereas the class B and the class D combination is used for the choppers to turn off the thyristors in this device, in this circuits. To turn off thyristor, bring the anode current passing through the thyristor to be will be less than IH or apply reverse voltage across thyristor. So there are two methods by which we can turn off the thyristor. One is bring the anode current below the holding current. So bring the anode current passing through the thyristor will be less than IH. Yes. If you make the anode current less than holding current, then it is automatically going to get turned off. Or apply the reverse voltage across the, across the thyristor. By this way, also we are going to get turned off the thyristor. So these are the two ways which we can turn off the thyristor. You can see clearly this is a circuit. So with the help of this circuit, we are going to trigger this thyristor. So this is anode, cathode and gate. So for gate, we are going to give some DC voltage ES and this RS. So this is called the trigger circuit in order to give the gate supply. So this is IG current and this is the VG. So plus or minus VG. So VG into IG is called as a gate power dissipation. So the product of VG into IG is called as a gate power dissipation. Whereas VG by IG is called as a gate cathode characteristics of line slope. So VG by IG is called as a gate cathode characteristics of the line slope. So therefore VG by IG is called as the gate cathode characteristics of the line slope. Whereas RS is called as the gate source resistance. Means the resistance of this ideal source. VGIG is called as the gate power distribution. VG by IG is called as the gate cathode characteristics or line slope. Whereas RS is called as the gate source resistance. So this is the triggering circuit. So PID is equal to VM into voltage supply factor. So PID is equal to VM into voltage supply factor. And PID is equal to root to VRMS into voltage supply factor. So PID is called as the rating of SCR. And VRMS is equal to voltage up to which SCI can be operated. So this is a very important formula. So peak inverse voltage is equal to Vm into voltage supply factor. Voltage supply factor. So Vm is equal to root to VRMS. So PIV is called as the rating of the SCR. So rating of the SCR and here VRMS is called as the voltage up to which SCR can be operated. So VRMS is called as the voltage up to which SCR can be operated. So therefore peak inverse voltage is equal to Vm into voltage supply factor. So Vm is equal to VRMS. So PIV is called the rating of SCR, whereas VRMS is called the voltage up to which SCR can be operated. So PIV is called the rating of SCR and VRMS is called the voltage up to which SCR can be operated. So this is a very important relation which is PIV is equal to Vm into voltage supply factor, Vm is equal to root into VRMS. So PIV is called the rating of SCR and VRMS is called the voltage up to which SCR can be operated. So PIV is called the rating of SCR and VRMS means voltage up to which SCR can be operated. Some features of MOSFET. So now we have discussed some of the important features of the MOSFET. MOSFET is a unipolar device. I have already told you MOSFET is a unipolar device whereas the IGBT and the BJT are the bipolar device. It has high input impedance as I have already told you it has very high input impedance because of insulation is present. It has lower switching losses. It has lower switching losses but its on state resistance and conduction loss are more. So it has the lower switching losses but higher conduction losses whereas the BJT has the lower conduction losses but the higher switching losses. It is opposite. So it has low switching losses and but its on state resistance and conduction loss are more. It is a voltage control device and it has a post temperature coefficient for resistance. As the temperature increases, its resistance also increases. So this makes parallel operation of MOSFET easy. So, because it is a positive temperature coefficient material for resistance, so we can easily operate for parallel operation of MOSFET is easy. Secondary breakdown does not occur because it has positive temperature coefficient. So, here, whereas secondary breakdown is going to occur in the, in the BJT, so secondary breakdown is absent in both the MOSFET and also in the IGBT because these are the positive temperature coefficient for resistance. 
as it is it is as it is in some sort it is as so this is a way we are going to use it for parallel operation and is it to parallel for higher currents so are is it to parallel for higher currents leakage currents is relatively high so overload and peak current handling capability are high and doesn't have more linear characteristics so we can say that here secondary breakdown is not all possible in the igbt and also also because these are the false temperature coefficient behaviors and easy for parallel easy to parallel for higher currents means we can usually uh, apply them in parallel for higher currents and leakage currents is relatively very higher and uh, overload and peak current handling capability are higher doesn't have linear characteristics so there are no linear characteristics and i will tell you the power dissipation we can write in terms of function of the the power dissipation and mass wave we can write in the terms of the function of the wave source capacitance also so therefore we can say that mosfet is a unipolar device it has high input impedance and it's so it has a switching loss is very lower but connection loss are very higher it is a voltage control device and it's a post temperature coefficient as a is a post temperature coefficient resistance so it's a, it's a it has post temperature coefficient for resistance so because of this only we are going to make it useful for the parallel operation of mosfet so very easier so secondary breakdown is not all possible because it has a post temperature coefficient for resistance easily we can make it for parallel operation for higher currents but the leakage current is very, is very higher and overload and the peak current handling capability are higher doesn't have it doesn't have any linear characteristics and the uh, the amount of power dissipation in the mosfet we can write in terms of the function of the gain to source capacitance now we are going to draw the switching characteristics of the gto gto is a fully controlled device and also it is a bidirectional it is a unidirectional with a bipolar so these are the characteristics of the switching characteristics of a gto so here this is a current armature current so current anode current is going to get decay and the voltage across the anode means the voltage across the gto is going to get increased so whenever we are going to turn off whenever we are going to turn off the current is going to decay but the voltage is going to get increased so therefore you can see this is called as a gate current gate current will be in this format so igb is called as a gate current peak value so igb is called as a gate current peak value and ts is called as a storage period time so storage period time so ts is called as a storage period time so this is the characteristics of the switching characteristics of gto so anode current is going to get decay but as the anode voltage is going to get increase so here this is called as the gate current will be in this format so it has a high gp gate current peak value p is called as the storage time so some two facts we are going to discuss a transistor requires turn off circuit while transistor doesn't so transistor is a semi control so we need to turn off with the help of some combustion circuit but as a transistor is a fully controlled so it doesn't need any combustion circuit so a transistor requires turn off circuit while transistor doesn't so a transistor draws continuous base current so transistor is going to draw the continuous base current because it is a current control device voltage drop of a transistor is more than the top transistor so the voltage drop of a transistor is more than the top the transistor a transistor doesn't require a continuous gate current so a transistor doesn't require any continuous gate current so here so we can say that but a transistor needs a continuous base current so therefore whereas a transistor doesn't require a continuous gate current so these are some of the important difference between a tra transistor and also transistor so transistor requires a turn off circuit while transistor doesn't a transistor draws the continuous base current whereas a transistor doesn't require a continuous gate current the voltage drop of a transistor is more than the top of a transistor so we will discuss some more things igbt have higher efficiency and faster chip i have already told you igbt it has a good characteristics of both the bjd and also mosfet so it has high input impedance and also low conduction losses so igbt has high efficiency and faster chip so here whereas the switching frequency is not so higher when compared to mosfet but the voltage heating is very higher when compared to any other device so transistors and triads are both bipolar devices transistors and triads are both bipolar device so transistors and triads are also both bipolar device like uh, like igbt and bjd so bjd igbt transistors and triads all these things are bipolar devices only mosfet is a unipolar device because in the transistors it is made of pn so therefore we can say both the so both the things poles and electrons are uh, responsible for conduction so it is called as a bipolar device so the but they have very low onset voltage drop but they have very low onset voltage drop but this triads and 
parasites are very low onset voltage drop but because of the minority charge carriers in the device must be removed before they can be blocked in applied voltage so the switching times are completely locked so what i am trying to say very simply is here i am going to compare some of the important facts here so igbt have higher efficiency and fast switching i have already told you igbt has the best features of both the mosfet and also the pjt so it is a bipolar device it has high input impedance and low conduction losses it has high efficiency and fast switching so this switching is not so fast when compared to mosfet but the voltage getting is very higher whereas the thyristors and cracks are also bipolar device because they are also made of pn so therefore they are also bipolar devices a very low onset voltage drop the voltage drop the onset voltage drop is very less because of the minority charge carriers in the device must be removed before they can block an applied voltage so if they want to block any applied voltage so the first thing is they need to we have to remove all these minority charge carriers very fast as possible as soon as possible we have to remove all these minority charge carriers if they want to block any applied voltage so switching times are completely long so because of this reason only means it takes some amount of time to remove all these minority charge carriers whenever a negative voltage is applied so it takes some time the time is called as the turn off or the switch off time so it takes a lot of time to remove all this and uh, minority charge carriers whenever you apply reverse voltage across them because of this reason only the switching times are completely long so now the devices and the switching time so we are going to compare the devices and the switching times so trax is only from 200 to 400 microseconds the switch off time is only 200 to micro 200 to 400 microseconds whereas the scrs is 100 to 400 microseconds whereas mosfet is 5 to 10 microseconds whereas igbt is from 50 to 100 microseconds so we can say that mosfet is a very fast because it is a unipolar So because it's a unipolar, because there are no minor to charge carriers, it takes very very less time. So the switching of time is very less, which is five to ten. Next comes the IGBT. Then next comes the IGBT. So after MOSFET, the next one is the IGBT. Then the SCR. Then the TRIA. So first MOSFET, then IGBT, then SCR, and then TRIA. So we can say that MOSFET is the most fastest switching. then comes the igbt then comes the scr and then comes the tria so mosfet is the first mosfet switching then the igbt then the scr then the tria so we can say that simply here mosfet takes less amount of time for turn off ideally zero but practically a small amount of time very less amount of time the next comes the igbt then the scr and then the tria all i told you vjt igbt and gtto so vjt igbt gto and also the triac and also the thyristors all these are the bipolar devices because they are made of pn diodes but as a mosfet is a unipolar device increasing the temperature of scr to sufficient large value will damage the scr instead of turning on the device so increasing the temperature of scr to sufficient large value will damage the scr instead of turning on the device so there is a one turning on method which there is a one turn on method which is increasing the temperature so if you increase the temperature very very higher very higher so because of that instead of turning on the device will burn so increase the temperature of scr to sufficient large value will damage the scr instead of turning on the device because one of the turn on method is increase the temperature so because of increase the temperature the junction the reverse bias junction j2 is going to get depleted so therefore the electrons are going to get flow so this okay if the temperature is below the normal rated value but if it is very higher then the current is going to get flow very higher and it is going to get damage instead of turning on the device so increase the temperature of scr to sufficient large value will damage the scr instead of turning on the device a rectangular gate pulse of high amplitude and narrow width will decrease the turn on time of turn on time of scr see i have already told you the turn off time is directly proportional to temperature so the turn off time of scr is directly proportional to temperature of operation remember this important point the turn off time of an scr is directly proportional to temperature it is directly proportional to temperature so in this the say a rectangular gate pulse a rectangular gate pulse of high amplitude and narrow width will decrease the turn on time of the scr so if you if you use a gate pulse of very high amplitude but narrow width so because of that the turn on time is going to get decrease so it is going to become very faster so if you if you have a very high amplitude gate current with a less narrow width 
then we can say we are going to decrease the turn on time means it is going to come into on position very small amount of time so if you have a high amplitude of rate current with a less amount of width then you can on it very easier with a less less of turn on time so therefore a rectangular gate pulse of high amplitude and narrow width will decrease the turn on time of acr a rectangular gate pulse of high amplitude and narrow width will decrease the will decrease the turn on time of acr means if you use a higher high amount of gate pulse amplitude with a small amount of width then you can you can get the turn on time very less very less means within a small amount of time the device can get turn on so a rectangular gate pulse of high amplitude and narrow width will decrease the turn on time of acr So it is a fastest switching device because it is a majority carrier device and it does not have the minority carriers which take long time to settle down. I have already told you MOSFET is a unipolar device. It has only majority carriers but no minority carriers. So if you apply any reverse voltage, so to block them, to block them, we need to remove all the we need to remove all the minority carriers. So it takes a certain time. But in the MOSFET there are no minority carriers, so it doesn't take any time to turn off. So therefore. Most of it is a fast switching device. Then comes the IGBT. Then comes the SCR. Then comes the PIAC. So most of it is a fast switching device because it is a majority carrier device and it does not have minority charges, so which can take long time to settle down. So most of it is a fast switching device because it is a majority carrier device and it does not have any minority carriers, so which takes lot of time to settle down. Always high rate of rise of voltage does not cause. always high rate of rise of voltage does not cause the does not cause damage to an acr so always high rate of rise of voltage does not cause damage to an acr means always means always having a high rate of rise of voltage does not cause damage to an acr so always high rate of rise of voltage does not cause damage to an acr so always high rate of rise of voltage will not cause damage to an acr so this is the structure of a n jfet structure means n channel jfet because it is a n channel so you can see clearly these are two or gates so we are going to give gate to source a negative voltage means reverse bias voltage so pn is reverse bias so by increasing the gs by increasing the gs voltage you can say we can control the depletion width so that the current id can be controlled so here if we increase the vgs then this is n is highly doped so therefore By controlling this, we are going to control the depletion width, so therefore the current is going to get controlled. So this is a voltage control device. Polarized LR snapper circuit used used to shape the turn-on switching trajectory of transistors and also to limit DI by DP during turn-on of ACR. Polarized LR snapper circuit used to shape the turn-on switching trajectory of transistor and also to limit DI by DP during turn-on of ACR. Polarized LR snapper circuit used to shape the turn-on switching trajectory of transistor and also to limit the DI by DT during turn-on of ACR. So the basic function of low polarized polarized LR snapper circuit here polarized LR snapper circuit used to shape the turn-on switching trajectory of transistor and also to limit the DI by DT during turn-on of turn-on of ACR. So basically. This polarized LR snapper circuit. Here it is a LR snapper circuit. The basic function of polarized LR snapper circuit is to shape the turn-on switching trajectory of ACR and also to limit the DI by DT during the turn-on of ACR. So, with the help of this polarized LR snapper circuit, we are going to shape the switching trajectory of transistor during turn-on and also we can limit the DI by DT during the turn-on. So, with the help of this polarized LR snapper circuit, during the turn-on process, we can shape the switching trajectory of transistor and also to limit the DI by DT. So, the basic function of polarized LR snapper circuit during the turn-on process of transistor is to shape the switching trajectory and also to limit the DI by DT. So, the polarized LR snapper circuit is used in the transistors. During the turn-on process, it can shape the switching trajectory of the transistor and also to limit the DI by DT. Turn-on and turn-off of a MOSFET is very small. The turn-on and the turn-off time of a MOSFET is very small because there are no minority carriers in the MOSFET. The minority carriers in the device takes more time to settle down during turn-off. So here it is a majority carrier device. The turn-on and turn-off is very small for MOSFET. I have already told you MOSFET is a 
and what are the power dissipated in the atmosphere is a function of the drain to source capacitance. So these are some of the important facts of the atmosphere. So transconductance is an important factor in the steady state characteristics of the atmosphere. So transconductance is an important factor in the steady state characteristics of the atmosphere. So if you see the atmosphere steady state characteristics, there is a term which is called as a transconductance. It plays a very important factor or it is going to play a very important role in the atmosphere. So IGBT has the highest input impedance and has low on state voltage drop. I have already told you IGBT is a combination of the MOSFET and also VJT. So whatever the good qualities in VJT and MOSFET, they are included in the IGBT. So IGBT has highest input impedance like the MOSFET and low on state voltage drop or conduction losses like VJT and low on state power loss. And it is a voltage control device and IGBT switching speed is less than MOSFET. I have already told you MOSFET has the highest switching speed when compared to IGBT. But the voltage rating of IGBT is very higher when compared to MOSFET. And IGBT is a voltage control device also. So this is the structure of the IGBT. So you can see the this is the structure of the IGBT. So therefore, here I have already told you for IGBT, there is a collector, there is a emitter and also there is a gate. So because of this insulation, it has the highest input impedance and this is the layers of P layer, N minus layer, N plus layer, P plus layer and N plus layer and N plus layer. So this is the structure of the IGBT. To turn off, to turn off a GTO, we need a high amplitude. We need a high amplitude but low energy never to current at the gate. I have already told you GTO is a fully controlled device. So in order to turn off the GTO, we need a very high amount of the negative current with a small amount of narrow width. So we need a high amplitude but low energy means negative current at the gate. So therefore simply we can say that we need a high negative current, high amplitude of negative current for a small amount of radiation that is called as the, that is the way that you can turn off a GTO. So to turn off a GTO, we need a high amplitude but low energy negative current at the gate. I have already told you the turn off, the turn off of a thyristor is directly proportional to temperature for thyristors. Means as the temperature increases, the turn off period is also increases. So turn off of any thyristor is directly proportional to its temperature. See, suppose there is an IGBT, so this is the gate, this is the collector and this is the emitter. So this is the symbol of an IGBT. So this is plus or minus VGE, this is plus or minus VCE saturation voltage. So this is a load resistor RL and this is the voltage of supply voltage of VCC. So here I want to find what is the average amount of power loss during the turn on. What is the average amount of power loss during the turn on. So before that let me tell you what is the value of IC. So if you apply the K here in this input in this load we are going to get VCC minus VC is that by RL. So if you want to find what is the average amount of power loss during the turn on period. Turn on period is turn on is the turn on period which is equal to VCC into IC by 6 into T on into FS. So this is the important formula which is VCC into IC into T on into FS by 6. And FS is the switching frequency of this that which is IGBT. So VCC into IC into T on by 6 into FS. So VCC into IC into T on into FS by 6. So if you want to find what is the average amount of power loss during the turn off which is VCC into IC into T off into FS by 6. So this is the way that you need to remember. So the average amount of power loss during the turn on is VCC into IC into T on into FS by 6. The average amount of power loss during the turn off is VCC into IC into T off into FS by 6. So G2 has very low turn off gate. See G2 has very low turn off gate and large negative gate current pulse are required to turn off the GTO and it has less reverse blocking capability. So these are the some of the important facts of the GTO. I have already told you GTO is a fully controlled device. And it is a fully controlled device. It is a UV directional and also it is a bipolar. So here GTO has very low turn off gain. The turn off gain is very very low. The turn off gain is very very low for a GTO. And a large negative gate current pulses are required to turn off the GTO. So a large amount of negative current pulse a small amount of duration we have to give in order to turn off the GTO and it has less and it has less reverse blocking capability. So reverse blocking capability is very much low for a GTO. So these are the some of the important points of the GTO. The IGBT makes use of the advantages of both the power MOSFET and also BJT because the IGBT has 
was with input characteristics and VJ the output characteristics. I have already told you the important facts of IGBT, which is IGBT is the combination of the some of the good advantages of both the power MOSFET and also VJT. So whatever the input characteristics of IGBT is similar to the input characteristics of MOSFET, whereas the output characteristics of IGBT is similar to the output characteristics of the VJT because it has high input impedance like MOSFET and low conduction losses like the VJT. A trial can be triggered by a gate pulse of both positive and negative polarity. A triad can be triggered by a gate pulse of both positive and negative polarity. So here, positive polar because the triad is nothing but it is a two thyristors in anti-parallel. So positive gate current is required to turn on one thyristor and the negative and the negative pulse is going to turn on the another thyristor. So a triad can be triggered by a gate pulse of both positive and also negative polarity because it is a fully controlled device. Hence we can on it and also we can off it. A switched mode power supply operating at 20 kW to 100 kW range uses MOSFET as the main switching. So a switched mode power supply operating at 20 kW to 100 kW range uses MOSFET as the main switching element. So a switched mode power supply operating at 20 kW to 100 kW range uses MOSFET as the main switching element because the frequency is very higher. So 20 kilohertz to 100 kilohertz means the frequency is very higher. In that range, we are going to use the MOSFET as the main switching element. So switched mode power supply operating at 20 kilohertz to 100 kilohertz range uses MOSFET as the main switching element. The triad can be used in AC voltage regulator. AC voltage regulator means I have already told you it is a cycloconverter. Cycloconverter means input is AC and the output is also AC. See, output frequency can be less than input frequency. Output frequency can be greater than input frequency also. But here always F0 is equal to N into F5. I have already told you N should be always purely integer. Thyristor GTO triad. These are said to be current trigger device. So thyristor GTO and triad. These are said to be current trigger device. Because here current is means gate current is responsible for the turning on. So because of this reason only we can call thyristor GTO and triad are said to be current trigger device. Whereas the MOSFET is said to be a voltage trigger device. So thyristor GTO and triad. To turn on we are going to use the gate pulse. So definitely we can say this is said to be current trigger device. Whereas the MOSFET is said to be a voltage trigger device. The MOSFET switch in its own state may be considered equivalent to capacitor because the gate to drain capacitors are present. The MOSFET switch in its own state may be considered equivalent to capacitor because the gate to gain capacitors are present. If you want to analyze the MOSFET in the on state, if you want to analyze the MOSFET in the on state, because of the capacitors present inside it, we are going to approximate to it as a capacitor in its on state. The MOSFET switch in its on state may be considered equivalent to capacitor because the gate to drain capacitors are present. See, if you want to analyze the MOSFET in its own state, if you want to draw an equivalent diagram in its own state, because there are a lot of capacitors present inside it, so this equivalent to a capacitor. Uncontrolled electronic switch employed in power electronics is diode. The uncontrolled electronic switch employed in power electronics connected is diode because diode is a uncontrolled device. Because here, always, see, diode is said to be an uncontrolled device because then its operation is depending only on the circuit itself. It is not under the user. That, that is the reason it is said to be an uncontrolled device because on and off of the diode is purely dependent on the circuit condition itself. That is the reason it is said to be an uncontrolled electronic switch. Employed in power electronic converters is said to be a device. Diode or simply it is an uncontrolled device. A commutation circuit employed to turn off an SCR. Satisfactory turn off is obtained when the circuit turn off is greater than the device turn off time. In a commutation circuit employed to turn off an SCR, satisfactory turn off is obtained when the circuit turn off time is greater than the device turn off time. See, suppose if you want to turn off the SCR with the help of this commutation circuit, then always you need to ensure that, always you need to ensure that circuit time is always, circuit turn off time is always greater than the device turn off time. Then only we can confirm that the device is 100% turn off. Circuit turn off time is the time for which we are going to keep the reverse voltage across the thyristor or the SCR is said to be circuit turn off time. That time should be always greater than the device turn off time. Then only we can ensure that, that the device is 100% turn off. 
satisfy the competition circuit employed to turn off an ECR. Satisfactory turn off is obtained when the circuit turn off time is greater than the device turn off time. A bipolar junction transistor BJT is used as a a bipolar junction transistor is used as a power control switch by biasing it in the cutoff region off state or in the saturation region on state. In the on state for the BJT, both the base emitter and the base control junctions are power bias. See, I have already told you the combination of the BJTs, how it is going to operate in the cutoff state, how it is going to operate in the saturation region, how it is going to operate in the active region. I have told that different ways of the junction junction collector junction and the emitter junction if collector junction and both the junction are reverse bias if the both are reverse bias then we say it is said to be cut off if both are forward bias means it is said to be saturation if the collector junction if the collector junction is reverse bias and the emitter junction is forward bias then we say it is said to be an active region so this is the thing that you need to remember so a bipolar junction transistor BJT is used as a power control switch by biasing it in the cutoff region off state or in the saturation region on state. In the on state for the BJT, both the base emitter junction and the base control junctions are power bias. I have already told you this point very clearly that a BJT can be only operated in the three regions. One is the cutoff region, one is the saturation region and the other is the active region. Cutoff region means both the collector junction and the emitter junction are the are in the reverse bias region. Whereas in the saturation region means the collector junction and the emitter junction are forward bias. Whereas the active region means the collector junction is reverse bias and the and the emitter junction is active uh, forward bias. Then only we can say this is to be an active region. So these are the different ways that you need to always be remembering. So if you want to operate the BJT as a switch, then off state means orbit in the cutoff region, on state means orbit in the saturation region. So in the saturation region, both the collector junction and the emitter junctions are forward bias. The conduction losses versus device current characteristics of a power MOSFET is best approximated by a parabola. So the conduction losses versus divide current characteristics of a power MOSFET is best approximated by a parabola. Means if you want to draw the graph between a power losses with respect to current in a, with respect to power loss means with respect to conduction power loss and the current in a power MOSFET we are going to get a graph which is approximated to a parabola. So therefore the conduction power loss with respect to current in the MOSFET we are going to get a parabola curve. CR is considered to be semi controlled device because it can be turned on but not off with a gate pulse because the user can turn on the SCR but user cannot turn off the device. Because of that reason only we can say it is a semi-control device. So and also it is a current control device. So SCR, GTO, track all these said to be a current control device. So an SCR is a concept considered to be a semi-control device because it can be turned on by the user but not off with a gate pulse. So circuit turn off time of an SCR is defined as the time for which the SCR is reverse biased by the combination circuit. Circuit turn off time of an SCR is defined as the time for which the SCR is reverse biased by the combination circuit. Means the time for which the combination circuit is going to give you the reverse voltage across the SCR, the how much amount of the time is said to be circuit turn off time. So circuit turn off time of an SCR is defined as the time for which the SCR is reverse biased by the combustion circuit. Always the circuit turn off time should be greater than the device turn off time. Then only we can 100% guarantee that the device is perfectly turned off. The turn off time provided to the thyristor by a circuit is called turn off time. The turn off time provided to the thyristor by a circuit is called the turn off time. It is defined as a time, be time between the instant anode current becomes zero and the instant reverse voltage due to the circuit which is zero. The turn off time provided to the thyristor, the turn off time provided to the thyristor by a circuit is called as a turn off time. It is defined as a time between the instant anode current becomes zero and the instant reverse voltage due to the circuit which is zero. So simply we can say that what is the turn off time? The turn off time means the time at which the time at which the anode current becomes zero and the reverse voltage and the reverse voltage it is going to become zero. So between these two times, between this duration is said to be a turn off time. The turn off time provided to the thyristor by circuit, the turn off time provided the turn off time provided to the thyristor by a combustion circuit is called a turn off time. It is defined as a time between the instant anode current becomes zero and the instant reverse voltage due to the circuit which is zero. 
So it is a time interval between the arc current which is zero and the reverse voltage which is zero. So this time division is said to be a turn off time. For medium power thyristors of rating 6 ampere to 60 ampere, the ratio of the latching current to holding current is nearly 1.5 to 2. So latching current is always greater than the holding current. Suppose if you are going to use thyristors of rating current rating of 6 ampere to 60 ampere, the latching current is nearly equal to 1.5 to 2 times of the holding current. So therefore, for medium power thyristors of rating 6 ampere to 60 ampere, the ratio of the latching current to holding current is nearly 1.5 to 2. It indicates that always we can say that if you are going to use thyristors of rating of 6 ampere to 60 ampere, then we can say that the latching current is nearly equal to 1.5 to 2 times the holding current. So this is a diode. So this is a basically a diode. So therefore you can see this is the plus or minus VD and this is the ID. So we can replace this diode with this circuit which is plus or minus 0 and this is resistor R0. So we can replace this diode with this equivalent circuit. This is plus or minus V0 which is called as a cutting voltage and this is a resistor R0. So therefore if you apply the cable here we are going to get VD is equal to here V0, V0 plus R0 into ID, R0 into ID where R0 means it is basically slope. You can write either M or whether we can write M because R0 is nothing but it is a slope of the, it is a slope of the VI graph, it is a slope of the VI graph. So here we have drawn the graph between I and D, so ID and VD. So you can see clearly this is the graph we are going to get. So up to below V0 the current is 0, so V0 is said to be a cutting voltage. So this is the equation of this line. So therefore you can simply say that where m is the slope which is equal to dv by vi is equal to rd. So if you take the slope of this vd and id graph then you are going to get which is dv by di is equal to rd. So this is called as the slope or rd. So you can see here either m can be either r, r not or rd. You can take anything. So vd is equal to v not plus id into rd and rd is equal to m. m is equal to slope of dv by di. So if you want to find how much amount of power loss how much amount of power loss in this I diode is equal to V0 into ID average. So V0 into ID average plus here ID RMS whole square into RD. So V0 into ID average plus ID RMS whole square into RD is equal to or simply VD into ID. So VD into ID or simply you can do VD into ID. So therefore power loss is equal to V0 into ID average plus ID RMS square into RD is equal to simply VD into ID. So basically we have written an equation of this line. So basically we have written an equation of this line. So this is the equation of this line which is equal to VD is equal to M into ID plus V0. So this is the equation of this line. So if, if you substitute your ID is equal to 0, we are going to get VD is equal to V0. So if you substitute VD is equal to, if you substitute ID is equal to 0, we are going to get VD is equal to V0. So this is the, just like Y is equal to MX plus C graph y is equal to mx plus c. This is y, this is x. So y is equal to m, m into y is equal to mx plus c. So y is equal to m into x plus c. C means p So this is the y, this is x. So this is the slope and this is a y intersect. So y is equal to mx plus c. So c is equal to v naught, y is equal to vd, x is equal to id, slope is equal to m, which is dv by di. So MOSFET is said to be a majority carrier device. I have already told you MOSFET is always a majority carrier device or unipolar device. Whereas the IGBT diode and thyristor it is said to be a minority carrier device means it is a see in the IGBT in the diode and thyristor all these are said to be bipolar or you can say here holes and electrons both are viewed connect for the current. So it is also called as a minority carrier device because it is a bipolar and it is a unipolar. In order to simplify the design of the converter transformer, the two converters in a dual converter should be connected using direct anti-parallel connection. In order to simplify the design of a converter transformer, the two converters in a dual converter should be connected using direct anti-parallel connection. So here, anti-parallel connection is used in the dual converter. So therefore, we, can, we are going to get the operation in the four columns. So in order to simplify the design of a converter transformer, the two converters in a dual converter should be connected using a direct anti-parallel connection. For the same voltage output, the power factor of a single phase semiconductor is better than a full converter. For the same voltage output, 
the power pack of a single phase single converter is better than a full converter. So for the same voltage output, the power pack of a single phase semi converter is better than a full converter. Because, because I already told you, a single phase semi converter, the fundamental displacement factor is cause of alpha by 2, whereas a full converter, the fundamental displacement factor is cause of alpha. As alpha decreases, power factor increases. So as alpha decreases, the power factor increases. So we can say that the single phase semiconductor has the best power factor when compared to full converter. So therefore, for the same voltage output, the power factor of a single phase semiconductor is better than a full converter. And I have also told you the THD of the single phase semiconductor is lesser than the THD of full converter. So therefore, single phase semiconductor is more efficient when compared to full converter. For the same output voltage, the peak inverse voltage of thyristors for three phase full wave center tap circuit is double of the three phase full wave grid circuit. See, I have already told you for three phase, see, if you use the center tap, if you use the center tap, the peak inverse voltage is very high and if you use the bridge circuit, the peak inverse voltage is very less. So therefore we can say that for the same output voltage, the peak inverse voltage of thyristor for three phase full wave center tap circuit is double that of the three phase full wave grid circuit. So if you use the center tap circuit, the peak inverse voltage is let me assume 2 Vm. So if you use the bridge circuit, the PIV is nothing but 3 Vm. So this is something that you always have to remember. So a three phase semiconductor has the unique feature of working as a six pulse converter for alpha less than 60 and as a three pulse converter for alpha greater than equal to 60. A three phase semiconductor has a unique feature of working as a six pulse converter for alpha less than 60 and as a three pulse converter for alpha greater than 60. So this is an important point that you always have to remember. So if for a three phase semiconductor, so a three phase semiconductor, it has a very unique feature. Whenever the alpha less than 60, it is going to act like a six pulse converter. But if the alpha is greater than 60, it is going to act like a three pulse converter. So this is a very much important point. So this point you need to always remember a three phase semiconductor. So a three phase semiconductor it has a very a unique feature, which is whenever the alpha is less than 60, it is going to act like a six pulse converter. And whenever the alpha is greater than 60, it is going to act like a three pulse converter. So this is a very much important point in a three phase semiconductor. So a three phase semiconductor it has a very unique feature. Whenever the alpha is less than 60, it is going to act like a 6 pulse converter and whenever the alpha is greater than 60, it is going to act like a 3 pulse converter. So some important facts we are going to discuss which is the voltage developed across the off switches. The voltage developed across the off switches of the off bridge converter is the maximum DC link voltage. The voltage developed across the off switches of the off bridge converter is the maximum DC link voltage. So in a half bridge converter, half bridge converter means simply we can say it is a semi converter. In a half bridge converter, a semi converter, the maximum peak inverse voltage is equal to DC value maximum peak value. So therefore we can say it is the, the voltage developed across the off switches of the off bridge converter is the maximum DC link voltage. In the full bridge converter, the voltage across the primary of the transformer is the DC link voltage. In the full bridge converter, the voltage across the primary of the transformer is the DC link voltage. The voltage developed across the off switches of the full bridge converter is the maximum DC link voltage. See, whether it is a full bridge converter or whether it is a half bridge converter, the maximum, the maximum voltage, the maximum voltage across the off switches is equal to maximum DC value. So therefore, that is the meaning whether it is a half bridge or the full bridge. So this one point and third point is very similar. So only thing is they are going to change the converter, but you know they are going to face the same amount of maximum peak value. So in the full bridge converter, the voltage across the primary of the transformer is the DC link voltage. So the voltage developed across the R switches of the R bridge converter is the maximum DC link voltage. Similarly, the voltage developed across the R switches of the full bridge converter is the maximum DC link voltage. Similarly, in the full bridge converter, the voltage across the primary of the transformer is the DC link voltage. So whether it is half bridge converter or the full bridge converter, in the half state, in the half state of the switches, the maximum peak inverse voltage they are going to choose, they are going to get is the maximum value of the supply voltage, which is Vm. 
So now we are going to discuss the input power factor. The definition of input power factor. It is defined as the ratio of the total main input power to the total RMS apparent power input to the converter. So it is defined as the ratio of the total main input power to the, to the total RMS apparent power to the converter. Since only the fundamental component contributes to the main input power, the power factor may be defined as. So we can say that simply, see what is the power factor? Input power factor means it is a ratio of the whatever the active input power given to the converter by the total apparent power given to the converter. That is the meaning of the input power factor. So it is a defined as a ratio of the total main input power to the total RMS apparent power to the converter. Since the total main input power is nothing but it is a fundamental component power. So since only the fundamental component contributes to the main input power, the power factor may be defined as. So input power factor is equal to V, V1 I1 cos I1 by VRMS into IRMS. Where V1 is RMS value of the fundamental voltage, I1 is RMS value of the fundamental current plus cos I1. I1 is a phase angle between the fundamental voltage and the fundamental current by VRMS into IRMS. Because always V1 and VRMS both are same. So they are going to get cancelled. So finally we are going to get I1 cos I1 by IRMS. So this is said to be, see whereas cos I is called as a fundamental displacement factor, whereas I1 by IRMS, the RMS value of the fundamental component by the RMS value of the overall current is called as the distortion ratio. So therefore input power factor is equal to distortion ratio into fundamental displacement factor. Where V1 is equal to VRMS is equal to RMS of the phase voltage or simply we can say RMS value of the fundamental component. Whereas I1 is called as the fundamental component of the RMS supply current. I1 is called as the RMS value of the fundamental supply current. And phi1 is the and phi1 is the input displacement angle or input displacement angle. Whereas cos of phi1 is called as the input displacement factor or fundamental displacement factor. And IRMS is the a supply RMS current. RMS value of the supply current. Bladder resistor did not consume too much power while supply is on. Bladder resistor, bladder resistor did not consume too much power while supply is on and the voltage will decay quickly to safe level when the supply voltage is switched off. Means it always ensures a minimum current drain in the circuit. See, some of the important facts of this bladder resistor is it doesn't consume too much power. This bladder resistor will never consume too much power while supply is on. See, when the supply is on, this beta resistor will never consume too much power. And the voltage will decay quickly to safe level when the supply is switched off. Suppose if you switch off the supply, the voltage across it, it is going to quickly, the means it is going to quickly decay to a safe level. Means it always ensures a minimum current drain in the circuit. So always you can say that whenever the supply is on, it is always going to consume less amount of power. When the supply is off, the voltage across the bladder resistor is going to decay. So therefore, it is not at all going to have consumed any power. So bladder resistor does not consume too much power when the supply is on and the voltage will decay quickly to safe level when the supply is switched off. Means, it always ensures a minimum drain current in the circuit. So we can say that whenever the supply is on, the bladder resistor will never consume too much power. If the supply is off, the voltage across the bladder resistor will decay very faster to a very safer level. So therefore, it is going to consume even less power. That is the meaning of this one. So it is always going to maintain a minimum current in that bladder resistor. Always it, is, it will have a minimum current. So it always ensures a minimum current drain in the circuit. EHD is a measure of the harmonic content in the input supply current I. In case of single phase diode rectifier with capacity filter, the AC input current waveform is not smooth and have maximum harmonic content. So we can say that THD is a measure of the harmonic content in the input supply current I. So THD is going to tell you how much amount of harmonics is present. If THD is more, the harmonics are more. As the harmonics are more, the loss are more. So as loss are more, the efficiency is less. That is the meaning of this one. So as efficiency is less means we can say that the power factor is also less because loss are more means the active power consumed is very less. So therefore the power factor is also very less. So THD is a measure of the harmonic content in the input supply current I. In case of single phase diode bridge rectifier with capacitor filter, the AC input current waveform is not smooth and have maximum harmonic current. So whenever the current is not smooth waveform, it will have definitely highest maximum harmonic content. So V0 of T is equal to I0 of T into R plus A. Suppose V0 of T is equal to I0 of T into R plus A, means the load is a RE load. 
So if you want to find the average value, so beyond average is equal to I naught average into R plus T. Because the average value of E is again E. If you want the RMS value, beyond RMS is equal to I naught RMS into R plus E. Because for DC value, the RMS and the average value same. Characteristic features of this continuous conduction compared to continuous conduction in a two pulse single phase bridge converter are small or average value of the load voltage and the larger ripple content. The characteristic features of the discontinuous conduction compared to continuous conduction in a two pulse single phase bridge converter are smaller average value of load voltage and larger ripple current. The characteristic feature of discontinuous conduction compared to continuous conduction in a two pulse single phase bridge converter are smaller output voltage values and the smaller va average value of the load voltage and the larger ripple current content. So, in the discontinuous conduction, you can simply say that in the discontinuous conduction, the voltage will be negative. So, voltage will be negative means the average value of the output voltage will decrease and the larger ripple current is going to be present. So, in the discontinuous conduction, we can say that in the discontinuous conduction, the voltage will be negative. So, therefore, the average value decreases. So, the average value of the load voltage will decrease and there is a large amount of ripple contained in the current and the large amount of ripple contained in the current is going to be present. Whereas in the continuous conduction, voltage will never be negative. So, because of that, the average value of the output voltage will increase and the ripple contained in the current will decrease. So, we can say that the characteristic features of discontinuous conduction compared to continuous conduction in a plus single phase bridge converter are smaller average value of the load voltage and larger ripple content. Means Whenever the in discontinuous conduction mode, the voltage will be negative, the output voltage is negative, so therefore the average value of the output voltage will decreases and also ripple content, the ripple content is going to get increased. Multi-phase rectifiers are preferred because multi-phase rectifiers are preferred because higher DC voltage or increased output voltage, better transformer utilization factor, better input power factor, less ripple content in output current or reduced harmonics, lower size of filter circuit parameters because of higher ripple frequency. So, these are a lot of advantages of using the multi-phase rectifiers means more than one rectifiers are preferred because higher DC voltage. If you use more than one rectifier, the DC, the higher means the average value of the output voltage will increase and increased output voltage means the average value of the output voltage will increase. Better transformer utilization factor means using the transformer very highly better input power factor input power factor is very improved very higher lesser less ripple content in output current means output current will have less amount of ripple content and also or reduced harmonics as the ripple content decreases the harmonics also decreases lower size of filter circuit so filter circuit is of size of low size so, I would because of higher ripple frequency. So, with the help of multiple phase rectifiers, these are the so many advantages which are increased output voltage, better transformer utilization factor, better input, better input power factor, less ripple content in the output current. So, whenever the less ripple content means harmonics are also very less and lower size of filter required. So, lower size of filter circuit parameters because of higher ripple frequency. So, we can use a lower size of the filter. So, these are the advantages by using the multiple phase rectifiers. So, the average value of the output voltage increases, better transformer uh, utilization factor, better input power factor, less ripple content in the output current. So, as there is a less ripple content means harmonics are also very less. So, reduced harmonics and also lower size of the filter circuit is required to filter them. Of course, unit of T is equal to I naught of T into R. So, unit average is equal to I naught average into R. So, unit RMS is equal to I naught RMS into R. The main function of a free wheel diode in rectifier circuits is to prevent the reversal of load voltage and it is always counted across the load. See, always why, what is the main function of using the free wheel diode across the load? Because the load voltage tries to become negative. It is going to, it is going to, whenever the voltage tries to become negative, the free wheel diode is going to get connected and it is going to make it zero. So, therefore, the average value of the output value, the average, the average value of the output value will increase. So, the main function of a free wheel diode in the prepared circuit is to prevent the reversal of load voltage and it is always connected across the load. So, whenever it wants to try to become negative, it is going to connect, the free wheel diode is going to connect, so therefore, the output value will be equal to zero. So, average value of the output, output value will increase.
the main function of free willing diode in phase the main function of free willing diode in phase control rectifier is to improve the line power factor i have already told you the main function of free willing diode in phase control rectifier is to improve the line power factor is always to improve the line power factor so the main function of free willing diode in phase control rectifier is to improve the power factor because the voltage will be never be negative the more the voltage is never negative so average value of the output voltage is always positive so therefore as the average value of the output voltage is positive so input power factor will increase in a thyristor control rectifier in a thyristor control rectifier the firing angle of thyristor is to be controlled in the range of 0 degree to 180 degree in a thyristor control rectifier the firing angle of thyristor is to be controlled in the range of 0 degree to 180 degree I have already told you the rectifier, the firing angle is a range of from 0 degree to 180 degree. There are two ways you can control the alpha, by resistance figuring and RC figuring. With the help of resistance figuring, we can get the range of alpha only from 0 to 90 degree, whereas with the help of RC figuring, we can get alpha from 0 to 180 degree. There is a reason RC is preferred when compared to R figuring. Performance of a phase control converter is depleted for larger values of firing and alpha because the output voltage is reduced for larger values of alpha. The performance of a phase control converter is limited for larger values of firing angle alpha because the output voltage is reduced for larger values of alpha. See, whenever the alpha increases, what is going to happen? The average value of the output voltage will decrease and the performance will decrease. That is the reason never operate at huge values of alpha. The performance of a phase control rectifier, the phase control converter or rectifier is degraded for larger values of firing angle alpha because the output voltage is reduced for larger values of alpha. Because if you increase the alpha, then the average value of the output voltage will decrease and the performance will decrease. That is the reason never operate at large values of alpha in the phase control rectifiers or converters. Phase control converters at small values of output voltage have large harmonics in between the system. Poor power factor, low efficiency, not in the line voltage waveform. So, a phase control converters at a small values of output voltage have large harmonics in between the system, poor power factor, low efficiency, not in the line voltage waveform. Suppose if you are going to operate at huge value of alpha, what is going to happen? If you operate at huge value of alpha, the performance will decrease and the average value of the output voltage will decrease. A lot of harmonics are going to present. Poor power factor, low efficiency, not just in the line voltage waveform are also going to present. Yes. For a small amount of time, the voltage will be zero. All these things are going to present. So, if you use the alpha, a huge amount of alpha in the phase control rectifiers, then what is going to happen is the average value of the output voltage will decrease. And the large amount of harmonics are going to get introduced. So, as the harmonics increases, losses increases. So, efficiency decreases, poor power factor, and also the not just in the line, means for small amount of time, the voltage is equal to zero. A circulating current inductor is required in a dual converter to limit the circulating current. A circulating, a circulating current inductor is required in a dual converter to limit the circulating current. So, if you want to limit the circulating current in a dual converter, you need to use the inductor. So, if you, want, if you are going to use the inductor in a dual converter, then you are going to limit the circulating current. So, with the help of this, size is also increases. So, circulating current inductor is required in a dual converter to limit the circulating current. So, if you want to, uh, if you want to limit the circulating current, then you have to use the this inductor in a dual converter. Dual converter with circulating current mode is preferred if load current is to be reversed quite frequently and as fast response is desired or allows smooth reverse of load current with improved speed of response. So, a dual converter, a dual converter with circulating current mode is preferred if load current is to be reversed quite frequently and as a and a fast response is desired or allows smooth reversal of load current with improved speed of response. Suppose if you want the load with the load current reversing, if you want the load current to be always reverse the direction, then you have to use this inductor. So then you have to operate with the inductor. So therefore with the help of this you can easily get the current in order the direction V1. So therefore the speed of the response is increased. So therefore uh, allow the smooth reversal of load current with improved speed of response. So easily we can interchange the current direction so the speed of the response is also increased. So a dual converter circulating current mode 
satellite current modulus we are going to use the inductor in between them so therefore because of that here we can easily reverse the direction of the load current so therefore the speed of the response will increase so a dual converter with circuit in current mode is preferred if load current is to be reversed quite frequently and as a fast response is desired or in a smooth reversal of load current with improved speed of response if a diode is connected and anti parallel with a the transistor then turn off power loss decreases but turn off time increases if a diode is connected in anti parallel with transistor then turn off power loss decreases but turn off time increases because if you are going to connect the diode in anti parallel with transistor the power loss during the turn off will decrease but the turn off time increases so listen carefully if a diode is connected in anti parallel with transistor the turn off time increases but the turn off power loss will so if you are going to connect a diode in anti parallel with transistor the turn of time will increase the turn of time will increase the turn of time will increase whereas the turn of power loss will decrease resonant converters are basically used to reduce the switching losses so resonant converters are basically used to reduce the switching losses so during the switching during the switching of switches the losses are going to present so with the help of these resonant converters we are going to reduce this switching losses so during the switching of operation of uh, switches there is a huge amount of losses so this losses we can reduce with the help of this resonant converters so resonant converters are basically used to reduce the switching losses transistor circuits that directly convert polyphase ac voltage from one frequency to another frequency are called cyclo converters i have already told you this important point the definition of cyclo converter cyclo converter means input is a fixed ac and the output is a variable ac of variable frequency so variable ac means variable magnitude ac and also variable frequency means the output frequency can be lesser than input frequency can be greater than the input frequency so then if you can see f0 is equal to equal to f5 f0 is output frequency and f5 is the input frequency when n is the pure integer so a transistor circuit that converts the polyphase ac voltage from one frequency to another frequency are called as the cyclo converters so v0 average is equal to vm by 2 pi into 1 plus cos alpha average output voltage of single phase of control rectifier so for a single phase of control rectifier means single phase means single phase supply and half control means only one pulse in the output voltage and also it's a control means we are going to use a controlling device like a cms then the average value of the output voltage is vm by 2 pi into 1 plus cos alpha in a dual converter the circulating current allows the smooth reversal of load current with improved speed of response in a dual converter the circulating current allows the smooth reversal of load current with improved speed of response so if if you want the load to always change the current direction then you have to use the circulating current mode which is you have to use the inductors so therefore easily we can interchange the current direction so it is going to improve the speed of response fully controlled line complete converter functions as an inverter when the firing angle alpha is in the range of 90 degree to 90 degree only when the supplies are back in the door so listen carefully a fully controlled line converter converter functions as an inverter when the firing angle alpha is in the range from 90 degree to 90 degree only when it supplies a back emf load see suppose if the load is having if the load is having an emf like example rl load it is going to have some back emf load then for alpha is ranging from 0 to 90 degree so when alpha is varying from 0 to 90 degree it is going to act like a rectifier so input is ac and output is dc whereas from if it is alpha is varying from 90 to 180 then we can say it is going to act like inverter means converting dc to ac means the load is going to supply power to the source that is the meaning of this term so a fully controlled line the fully controlled line converted the converter functions as an inverter when the firing angle alpha is in the range of 90 degree to 180 degree only when it supplies a back emf load the load should compulsory contain a back emf fully controlled rectifier is a two coordinate converter fully caught fully controlled rectifier is a two coordinate converter for alpha less than 90 v not and i not are positive and dc motor load will operate in the forward motoring mode and for alpha less than 90 v not is negative but i not is positive and the dc motor operates in forward braking mode so here what i am trying to say is very simple for a fully controlled rectifier 
will the control rectifier means it is a two coordinate converter means it is going to operate in the first coordinate and also in the fourth coordinate so therefore when the alpha is less than 90 v naught and i naught both are positive so therefore the dc suppose if you are going to connect the rma load which is a dc motor then it is going to operate in the forward motor both for alpha greater than 90 v naught is negative but i naught is positive so it is going to act in the forward braking mode forward braking mode that is the meaning of this one so v naught is positive i naught is positive it is going to act in a is going to act in a forward motoring mode whereas v naught is negative and the i naught is positive so simply we say it is a forward braking mode suppose if v naught is positive and i naught is negative means it is acting in a regenerative mode this is the point that we need to remember. So, V0 is positive, I0 is positive means it is going to act in a forward motoring mode. Whereas, whereas V0 is negative and I0 is positive means it is going to act in a forward braking mode. So, for alpha less than 90, it is going to act as a forward motoring mode. Whereas, for alpha greater than 90, it is, it is going to act like a forward braking mode. When a line counted converter operates in the inverter mode, it delivers real power to the AC supply. When the line computer converter operates in the inverter mode, it delivers real power to the AC supply. So, whenever the fully controlled converter is going to operate in the inverter mode for alpha greater than 90, then the load is going to supply the power to the, the load is going to supply the real power to the AC supply, to the source. So, the load is going to deliver the real power to the AC supply. So, when a line computer converter operates in the inverter mode, it delivers a real power to the AC supply. So, whenever the fully controlled converter is going to operate in the inverter mode, then the load is going to deliver the real power to the AC supply or the source. Line computed phase controlled converter is operating at its inverter limit. There can be a computation failure if the frequency increases. If line computed phase controlled converter is operating at its inverter limit, there can be a computation failure if the frequency increases. So, whenever the frequency increases, there may be a commutation failure will happen in the inverter mode. So, if fully controlled converter, if you are going to operate in the inverter mode and if you are still going to increase the frequency, there may be a chance of commutation failure. So, in the inverter mode, if you try to increase the frequency, then there may be a commutation failure will happen.